I hope everybody can hear me. Assalamu alaikum, um, all our panelists from uh, Afghanistan and all our panelists from Pakistan. Salman, I hope you will be able to listen to me. We are doing a lot of work on the Youth Forum ke is platform. Se. So, assalamu alaikum, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, a very good afternoon to all of you from Pakistan. And um, it's, uh, um, I would first like to you know, greet His Excellency Ambassador Najibullah Ali Khil. We also um, greet Mr. Salman Javed, who's the Director General of Park Afghan Youth Forum and our distinguished panelists from Afghanistan and Pakistan. It's indeed a pleasure and more so an opportunity, I would say, to have all of you in our webinar, Peace in Afghanistan, a shared destiny of Park Afghan relations. Today, as we are all set to create history with peace on the horizon, it's indeed the need to find different ways, channels to exploit, I'd say, all possible areas where collaboration and cooperation between the two brotherly states can help sustain peace and usher in an era of development and prosperity for both. Shared destiny, the topic of today's webinar, I'd say is not only the apt way of describing part of Han relations, it also has deeper meaning attached to it. It portrays the nature of part of Han relation. It also uh, portrays hope, and I would say a very realistic approach between Pakistan and Afghanistan. Our fates and destinies are tied together. We have shared borders and cultural homogeneities. Hence, as a neighbor and a brother, Pakistan has initiated diplomatic and developmental initiatives to ensure that prosperity and growth accompany the peace in Afghanistan. For lasting peace, it is necessary that Afghanistan and Pakistan work together to ensure that trade, health, and education sectors continue to grow and contribute towards the peace in Afghanistan. Furthermore, a key feature of Park Afghan relation has been its shared interest in sports, media, and entertainment, and cultural exchanges, which has provided grounds for people from both countries to come close together. Today, as always, as last time, Park Afghan Youth Forum has taken the initiative to explore routes to sustainable peace by creating this platform wherein all our experts, our policymakers, our officials, and our practitioners will discuss how collaboration and cooperation in various sectors can help strengthen ties and also something very important that I'd like to discuss in today's webinar, the role Pakistan can play in the region with regards to creating and promoting positive peace. I welcome His Excellency, Ambassador Najibullah Ali Khil, who is the Ambassador of Afghanistan to Pakistan. I would uh, uh, give the forum to you, sir, and we would like that you throw light not only on the peace process, but the shared destiny that uh, we all believe is the new hope, um, the new ray of hope, and of course, the future for sustainable peace. Thank you. Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. Salam alaikum and very good afternoon from Islamabad. First of all, I wish to thank Mr. Salman Javed, the director of PAK Afghanistan Forum for the kind invitation and also for convening this very important webinar in a delicate and crucial time of our history. Afghanistan and Pakistan. First, as a close neighbors, we share a long history, religion, and culture. The second, our security, prosperity, and common future are deeply interconnected with each other. And the third, we have a huge potential to promote our partnership in all aspects, political, security, trade and transit, economic development, and cultural fields. On peace in Afghanistan, for more than four decades, our people have been suffering 
from terrorist, terrorism and violent extremism. And we have paid a big price in this regard. The war has turned our country into killing field. For this reason, millions of our compatriots left the country and currently nearly 6.5 million Afghan refugees are living abroad. 80% of them are living in Pakistan and Iran. The very serious impact of the conflict on our economy and young generation and women. They are the prime victims of the four decades of war and conflict. Therefore, to achieve a sustainable and durable peace has been the long lasting desire and demand of our people. The start of peace process, the start of peace negotiations some months ago in Doha was indeed a positive step to put an end to the conflict by peaceful means. We have fulfilled our commitment to pave, to pave the way and the ground for achieving political settlement, including the release of 6,000 Taliban prisoners. We declare to share the power with the Taliban through the peace government until the whole until the holding the early presidential elections the peace process has been strongly supported by our regional and international partners as well as the islamic ulamas of the world we appreciate pakistan's constructive role in assisting to lay the groundwork for the talks. Such contribution and support would be requested and needed for the success of Afghan peace process. Our goal is the ending of violence and comprehensive ceasefire as a critical component for restoring lasting peace in Afghanistan. Our goal is the preservation of independence and democratic Afghanistan, the protection of the 20 years gains, the women rights, and to be in peace itself and with our neighbors. The recent announcement to withdraw the US and NATO forces from Afghanistan has created a new environment and conditions for our relations with the regional countries and international community. The departure of the foreign troops from Afghanistan will be completed by September 11th. But the other main aspects of our partnership with the international community, including the financing of the Afghan security and defense forces, the political and diplomatic support and development assistance will continue. And there is a strong commitment in this regard. The new conditions in environment will not change anything for us as the government of Afghanistan in terms of our commitment to the peace process by political negotiation and settlement. At the same time, unfortunately, despite our, of the unconditional de departure of the foreign forces, which was the major demand by the Taliban, their response has not been positive so far. The continuation of violence and target killings 
the preparations for the spring offenses and the postponement of the Istanbul conference because of the Taliban position not to attend the meeting have been the matter of great concern. The reduction of violence leading to a comprehensive ceasefire is definitely in the benefit of everybody. Logically, the violence and peace process cannot be go hand in hand. And the spring offensive will bring only destruction, only further dis destruction and deep frustration for our people. Now there are great opportunities for all of us to sit down together and find a durable solution for the suffering of our people. We must rebuild our country together. And there is very reason, there is every reason that we must do it. And there is no any need to find excuses for continuation of war. Just a few days ago, on the 23rd of April, a trilateral meeting of the foreign ministers of Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Turkey was held in Istanbul. The joint declaration reiterated a sustained peace to be achieved only through an in inclusive political process that aims a permanent and comprehensive ceasefire leading to the ending of the conflict. Any failure, it is our firm belief that any failure or collapse of the peace pro efforts and peace process will bring terrible consequences to Afghanistan as well as to Pakistan and the entire region. The prospects of Afghan-Pakistan relations. What are our goals in this partnership? As close neighbor, we sincerely want to promote state-to-state -state permanent brother relations with Pakistan in all aspects. And of course, to address security challenges and mutual concern. We are very keen to take our relationship to the state and to the stage that was before the uh, four decades conflict. We have the mechanisms. The first and very important mechanism is the APAPS, which is a comprehensive structure mechanism to optimize our bilateral relations and cooperation. Furthermore, the shared vision adopted during the visit of His Excellency, the Prime Minister of Pakistan to Kabul on November last year is also an important document to advance trust building and to achieve tangible results. It is high time to enhance links and connections through people to people, B2B, government to government, and of particular note, security to security ties. On security, what are the common security concerns? Terrorism and violent extremism are the major threats to the national security and stability of both countries that we are facing with. Our region has the highest concentration of the terrorist networks. They are not just regional, but international, such as Al-Qaeda and Daesh. This menace has key linkage and they have very deep linkages with drug traffickers and also with the criminals. And not a single network can survive 
without selling narcotics or other criminal activities. This is the enemy of civilization and the enemy of all of us. And therefore, not a single country can solve or defeat it alone. It is absolutely vital for both countries to strengthen our bilateral cooperation through existing security mechanisms and enhance our coordinated approach in the regional level in this regard. What is the rule of economic cooperation for peace? We have some bilateral projects. I will mention two of them. The Chamansfield Bulldog Railway. And the second is the Peshawar Jalabad Railways. We should take practical steps in materializing these very important projects. And also there are trilateral projects about the railways. Recently, there was signing ceremony of agreement or MOU in Tashkent about Mazari Sharif, Kabul and Peshawar Railway. On trade, which is also one of the major and important components of our relations and cooperation, the capacity is, the potential of the trade is $5 billion. After 2001, Afghanistan, Pakistan, sorry, was the first Pakistan, uh, I'm sorry, Afghanistan was the first category market for the Pakistani products. And that time our trade reached $3 billion. As a result of some technical issues and obstacles, it decreased to around $1 billion. It is very important and vital to increase it and to remove the obstacle and uh, to enhance the trade relationship between the two countries. And it will be very vital that to sign a bilateral trade agreement. On trade and transit, APTA is a very important uh, agreement, which was expired on February uh, this year. It was extended for three months more. We needed to revise or to accelerate the process to find for finalizing the APTA agreement to the revised form. It would help, it will, will contribute for the trade and transit to the Central Asia and also from Central Asia passing Afghanistan and Pakistan to the uh, South Asia. Both countries will benefit from the trade and transit and it will bring prosperity for the entire region. On connectivity, the two countries in the region have a huge potential, a tremendous potential in human resources and, and huge potential in the resource industry. There are some very important projects the transnational projects, the TAPI project, the TAP, the CASA 1000, and also Lapis Lazuli Perido. I was an Afghan ambassador just six, seven months ago in Turkmenistan. TAPI gas pipeline is in a very strategic important, it has strategic importance for the Afghanistan, Pakistan, and also for the region. This will connect the four countries who are the participating countries of the TAPI project. This would be also as a corridor of the projects, the fiber optic, the highways, and also the TAP, the, I mean the elect electricity transmission line, and also the TAPI. We, we see for, for this project that they have strategic 
implication and strategic perspectives for Afghanistan and Pakistan and also for the region. It will create also thousands of jobs and it, and it will definitely contribute to peace and stability in Afghanistan and also in the entire region. It is our firm belief that a peaceful and democratic Afghanistan can serve as a land bridge, as a roundabout for regional connectivity and prosperity. Here I want to mention the poetry of Alama Iqbal, the national poet of Pakistan about Afghanistan's historic role in Asia. And I will tell it in Dari because he said it in, in Dari. Asya yak paikare abo gilast, melate Afghan daran paikar dilast, as fasade o Fasade Asia as Gushadezu or Gushadi Asia. Some points on education, education. We highly appreciate the Pakistan's efforts and contribution for providing the scholarship for Afghan students and some leading universities. Currently, nearly six to 7,000 Afghan students are studying in leading universities of Pakistan. And during the past some years, around 50,000 Afghan students have been uh, graduated from the universities of Pakistan. We need to enhance such co cooperation in the future. And also the students exchange program would be very important. A few words about the youth, the young generation, and, the peace, and also the peace process. Our country has a very young population, which represent the new Afghanistan. Our society has changed over the past 20 years, and the clock cannot be turned back. We rely on the youth for peace building, their spirit and potential are indeed very instrumental to make bridge for trust building and mutual cooperation. They are full of energy to, to shape the better future. About Afghan refugees, as a result of four decades of war, nearly three million Afghan refugees are living in Pakistan. We express our gratitude and thanks for hosting the Afghan refugees for such a long time. But what, is, what this hosting has brought? When I met an Afghan refugee who wanted to go back whom he said, I would leave half of my heart here in Pakistan and would take the other half to Afghanistan. It means that this hosting has brought to strengths and ties of brotherly relations between of our people, between Afghanistan and Pakistan. The peace conditions will create an environment in condition that they will return to Afghanistan. And it is our priority in our working with the Pakistani side that on a dignified manner and gradual manner, they should return to Afghanistan. Some points about the people context. We attach high value, significant value to the people to people context. Just in this forum, for the first time, I want to declare, to announce that starting from tomorrow, I, I, I mean that from Monday, we will issue one year multiple visa for the Pakistani brothers and sisters, and also more facilities for the Pakistani students who are studying in Afghanistan, and also for the businessmen, for the Pakistani traders and businessmen. We will do on a reciprocated manner all 
facilities that the Pakistani side also provided for the Afghan businessmen in Afghanistan. In conclusion, as Afghan ambassador, my message to this forum is the message of strong intention and determination to have durable, sustained, brotherly partnership between Afghanistan and Pakistan, trust building and good neighborhood. I wish for all of you distinguished participants a very constructive discussion with its fruitful outcomes. I thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador Najibullah Ali Sale, for, for giving us the insight and, and telling all of us the importance uh, of, the, uh, of the two countries, the relations, the nature of the relations, and all the potentials that need to be tapped. The most important thing that you, uh, you, you attached was to people-to-people -people contact and the action that you just took and announced that one year multiple um, you know, visa would be given to Pakistani nationals from Monday onwards and even for business visas, you said that you know, you're going to reciprocate the same kind what Pakistani side would be doing. Indeed, this is an important step and I would say these kind of st uh, steps as well as the uh, trust building measures, the confidence building measures will take us a long, long way. And uh, naturally, we all have to work towards durable, towards sustainable peace. And uh, both the countries can through brotherly relations. We thank you for being with us, for shedding light on this very important peace process, the very important relations, the nature of the relations that need to be, um, I would say, the roadmap on which both countries would now be working together. Um, your good wishes with all of us and your expertise with all of us on this forum, on part of One Youth Forum, definitely we are going to take a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, not only the interest that we have in this, but also a lot of expert opinion that you have given. We're going to work on that. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for giving us your time on this webinar. And now I would like um, to invite Mr. Salman Javed, the Director General of Park Afghan Youth Forum. I would say this is already a success, Salman, because uh, Ambassador Najibullah Ali Khail, the way he made some such announcements, which would, of course, increase people-to-people -people contact, tells us that this forum can be one of the forums that can, you know, tap different channels, different pathways uh, towards sustainable and durable and brotherly um, uh, relations as well as uh, sustainable peace. Over to you, Salman. Thank you so much, uh, Nadia. Can you hear me? <clears throat> yes, we all can. Right. Uh, thank you so much uh, for giving me the forum, uh, His Excellencies, Ambassador Najibullah Ali Khail, uh, Ambassador Aziz Ahmad Khan, who has also joined us uh, uh, just a while ago, uh, Ms. Fawzia Kufi, uh, distinguished panelist from Afghanistan and Pakistan. Uh, His Highness, uh, His Excellency, Ambassador Najibullah Khail, uh, very special and profound, profound thanks uh, for your valuable inputs and setting the tone of this webinar. Uh, dignitaries, on behalf of Park Afghan Youth Forum, I welcome you all on this webinar. Uh, it's heartening to see all distinguished panelists and honorable guests from both countries taking your time out to discuss and enlighten us about the ongoing peace process of Afghanistan, especially when there is an announcement being made by the US president and when there are different analyses uh, coming out with regards to the future of Afghanistan. Many questions are there in the mind of people of both countries as we both are interconnected in this for many known reasons. Questions like what will happen in a post withdrawal scenario? Will there be a negotiated settlement? The team and committee involved in negotiations, will they be able to safeguard the gains of their struggle to have a pluralistic, all-inclusive Afghan government in a system and a system in times to come? Are there any looming threats uh, what will be uh, what will become of the Afghan refugees uh, from education to health to trade like uh, the ambassador has uh, deliberated upon these points as well what will be the future outlook of Afghanistan as it will have a direct impact on Pakistan and indirect impact on South Asian region we have with us practitioners in this panel who are dealing with the China Pakistan issues and are all well aware of the developments being taking place, especially with regards to CPAC and BRI in this region. We hope to listen some key points as how Chinese factor will play a significant role 
in a post withdrawal scenario, whether it's BRI and CPEC going towards Afghanistan. How do Pakistan see Afghanistan? Do we still see Afghanistan from a geopolitical lens or do we have a paradigm shift and we may be watching these, uh, we, we, we may be watching things differently from a geoeconomical perspective. How do Afghanistan see Pakistan and so like the ambassador has, like uh, I stated earlier that he deliberated upon these points in very detail. But what are the gains in last few years with different tracks of diplomacies? Uh, how do we make the maximum use of different connecting elements that, that we already have? You see a lot of questions and a lot of matters to be discussed. And in this regard, this distinguished gathering here may enlighten us on these and many more aspects of the coming future and also how both countries, that is Pakistan and Afghanistan, will be able to share a destiny in sustainable peace, progress, and mutual understanding for the betterment of our future generations in times to come. I thank you all once again for being here with us. I uh, won't take much of your time and can't wait to hear you all uh, uh, allowed to enlighten ourselves and the youth watching this webinar. Thanks a lot. Over to you, Ms. Nadia. Thank you, Salman, the Director General of Park of Khan Youth Forum. And indeed, uh, we are all just like you are. We are all set to listen to um, our distinguished guests because we would like to know what, what key points they are going to add to um, um, you know, to this uh, important topic. And as you welcomed, you would, I, would, I would like to welcome Fazia Kufi Saiba. She's a member of the Afghan Parliament's women's rights activist and one of just four Afghan women, I'd say, at the negotiating table during current peace talks between the Taliban and the Afghan government in Doha, Qatar. So which shows also that, you know, women also play an important part. And as far as peace is concerned, and Fazia representing women in this peace talks, Definitely, she will have a lot to tell us about. Kufi is an accomplished author also, an internationally known outspoken advocate for the rights of women and children, democracy and moderate Islam. Because as Salman raised a lot of questions, even there are a lot of questions that we have in mind that after the withdrawal takes place in September, what about the women empowerment? How would this uh, new peace deal and the new Afghanistan would be looking at women empowerment? I would also like to welcome Ambassador, former Ambassador Aziz Ahmed Khansa, um, you know, he, he has a very diverse career, a distinguished career rather, I would say, accomplished career diplomat who is consultant at the National Defense University in Islamabad. He travels extensively at the international level to lecture at strategic security conferences with particular reference to Pakistan's foreign policy challenges. He has served as Pakistan's High Commissioner to New Delhi from June 2003 to 6 and was additional foreign secretary. Uh, from June 2000 to 2002. He joined the Pakistan Foreign Service in 1969 and has distinguished himself in high posts such as Pakistan's High Commissioner to Malaysia, Pakistan's Ambassador to Afghanistan from 1996 to 2000, has also served as spokesman um, of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs from November 2001 to 2003. He was also the Director General of the Foreign Service Academy from June 2002 to 2003. There's a lot more that I could go on, um, you know, about Ambassador Aziz Ahmed Khan Saab. The reason I tell all my guests so that, you know, with, with this very career, I would say he has a lot of, uh, uh, I would say we are going to take a lot of uh, expertise on Park of Afghan relation and how to move forward for a shared destiny. Thank you so much for joining us. And Fawzi, I'd like that, um, you know, we start from you because the peace process that we have been discussing and indeed this peace process as the ambassador also puts it, that after the withdrawal, there are a lot of questions also, but what we need to do, Pakistan and Afghanistan, is to invest, tap the potential where we can work together in collaboration and cooperation. So we would like you to talk about this, Fosia. Thank you, Nadia. Um, I would like to thank the um, organizers of uh, this timely forum. Uh, Mr. Saman, uh, Ambassador Ali Khel, and uh, all the distinguished participants of uh, this webinar. Um, uh, it's, an, uh, it's an opportunity for us uh, in terms of people-to-people -people connection between Afghanistan and Pakistan, because this is, this is what we can change the narrative basically on the ground. The narrative of our politics um, uh, that has always been misinterpreted due to the wrongdoings of some politicians Unfortunately, the, um, the policies of the, the, uh, the political level has always been narrated in a way that is not um, people's friendly. Um, uh, in terms of the, uh, the peace process and the possible scenarios and the, the way forward, um, um, 
I must say that um, uh, what we had hoped uh, that 2021 would be, and we still hope that 2021 would be uh, a year of peace um, for Afghanistan, um, which uh, certainly in larger will benefit not only Afghanistan, but also our the, the entire region. Because we know that um, uh, based on many researches, there are uh, 23 to 25 military extremist uh, groups that operate uh, between Afghanistan, Pakistan, Central Asia. Uh, so in a more uh, mil militarized environment um, and a deteriorated security situation, not only Afghanistan will be, um, the situation in Afghanistan will be chaos, but of course, uh, the larger region will also not be safe. We know that um, lately there have been attacks and there have also been uh, targeted um, assassinations in, 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 in security military um, attacks in Pakistan as well. So therefore, I think peace in Afghanistan is interlinked to the security in the region. And uh, that's why it's important for us to uh, resolve the dispute, the long-standing uh, conflict, over four decades of conflict um, in Afghanistan. When we speak of the war um, the, uh, and the peace, the immediate thing that comes to our mind is uh, the definition of peace is to silence the gap. But as somebody who has uh, lived in, uh, in, in war, and most of us actually uh, were born on, on, uh, due to the, uh, during war, and we have grown up during war, for us, uh, peace is not just um, uh, silencing guns. It is important that we silence the guns because um, uh, over the four decades, millions of people have lost lives. Um, millions of uh, Afghans actually got uh, uh, refugee to uh, immediate and far neighbors. Um, uh, the economic opportunities that uh, have been taken away from Afghanistan. Um, Afghanistan is traditionally a very rich country when it comes to natural resources and also uh, the potential to be economic hub uh, between Central Asia and South Asia. But due to the, the war, these potentials have not been used. So these are the effects of um, uh, the, the, uh, the impact of uh, active war in Afghanistan. However, for us, for, for the transformed generation of Afghanistan, um, peace is beyond just silencing the guns. Peace is about um, coexistence. Peace is about um, a dignified life. Peace is about justice. Peace is about uh, rights uh, to be pre preserved. Peace is about inclusion. It's about a government where everyone will see themselves in the future. So therefore, when we started the peace process in September 2020, um, uh, on behalf of Republic of Afghanistan, there are 21 members, uh, an equal number, of course, from the other side, from Taliban. Uh, what we have tried to do uh, on behalf of Republic, uh, Islamic Republic of Afghanistan to ensure that all of these um, uh, common principles of inclusion, of uh, representation, is kept in uh, consideration during the establishment of that uh, negotiation team, and therefore, we have four women uh, out of 21, which is a good number. We could still have more women because this peace process in Afghanistan is actually about women. Um, uh, it, it probably in the recent histories of conflict, there are no conflict that the two sides actually talk about women rights, except the peace process in Afghanistan where women rights are for bargaining and the, for, for debate. So therefore, it was important for us to make sure that we actually have more women um, but uh, many people in our part of the world, uh, Afghanistan is not an exception, even in Pakistan, still believe that, um, that peace and security is not a, 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 an area where women could be impactful. So therefore, for us, it was extremely challenging to ensure that there are four women, and that was a progress for us, that was an achievement. Now, um, we started um, the negotiation with a good faith, with a faith that um, we will be able to achieve um, a ceasefire, something that people of Afghanistan had hoped for uh, before going to negotiations. We had conducted um, a numerous number of uh, consultation meetings with people from across Afghanistan, all walks of life, um, to see what, what their priority is in the negotiation. Except um, a few who would say, you know, the principles of democracy, which is a common uh, desire, Everybody was asking for a ceasefire. Everybody across Afghanistan was asking us to um, include, to make sure that in the first 
uh, days of meeting uh, negotiation, we agree on a ceasefire. This was something we proposed, but of course you all know that um, initial first uh, two, three months uh, of the negotiations, we were mainly engaged in uh, talking about how to talk, like um, talking ab about how to agree on a code of conduct. And so the code of conduct was finalized in December. And then we came, um, we shared actually agenda items, 28 agenda items from our side to the other side of negotiation. And, and we also um, uh, had their, their agenda item, which was 24 agenda items. From our side, uh, ceasefire was the first priority. From the other side was establishment of Islamic structure. We exchanged other agendas and then we came back to Kabul to uh, do further consultation with leadership of the government, with High Council on Reconciliation, with civil society, with, with women groups, and with wider political community of Afghanistan to see what they think about this agenda. We kind of uh, uh, got their consent on, uh, on you know, the, the agenda items, and then we went back to Doha for negotiations. Since the negotiations have started in um, uh, January, of course, there was a month of pause, uh, mainly from Taliban, and then uh, we uh, actually um, this, uh, concluded discussions about few um, uh, agenda items um, uh, be between the two sides. Now, once again, our hope was, and, and our emphasis and our um, uh, interest on the negotiation table was to agree on a ceasefire. Um, because uh, eventually, if the people do not see the peace process impact their life, and uh, if they see that still there is a, 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 an increased level of um, violence, not only in the battlefield, but also in terms of targeted killing, targeted assassination, of course, people will lose hope over this peace process. So in order to regain the people's trust, we have proposed ceasefire, but of course the other side is reluctant um, on ceasefire. Um, moving forward um, um, uh, to uh, future initiatives about peace process in Afghanistan, we know that there is Turkey conference being planned uh, during May. Uh, of course, Taliban have been hesitant to attend this, uh, in the midst of all of this, the announcement by President Biden to withdraw full um, troops from Afghanistan without any conditions certainly put this, this process in a more difficult situation. And I will tell you why, because already after signing of the agreement between the United States and Taliban, the Taliban have this understanding that they have won uh, the, the war militarily and politically. So it makes it very difficult for us to um, agree on a political settlement. Therefore, my hope was that um, the announcement for withdrawal uh, would be when we reach a political agreement. Um, of course, no country wants a foreign uh, troop to be in their country, and Afghans have fought for their uh, freedom and liberty throughout the history. So they certainly do not want to see um, the uh, foreign troops in their country, but um, there is a, a time when uh, the foreign troops could withdraw and uh, without any major impact and complications. Now that they have announced um, the withdrawal, once again, our hope is that uh, with the support of international community, mainly the region, and, and namely uh, our uh, dear friend Pakistan, uh, to influence, uh, the, uh, using their leverage and influence over Taliban, uh, to bring them to the negotiation table, uh, uh, to a meaningful uh, negotiation, and also make them agree on um, a ceasefire. Because, um, uh, you know, in different countries, when there are peace negotiations, different um, uh, warring groups use different techniques. Uh, some actually escalate the violence. But in Afghanistan, we have already been in war for four decades. Active war, it's not even a passive war. Active war for four decades. So people are impatient and they have all the right to be impatient. And therefore, our demand is uh, to agree on a ceasefire that will lead to a political settlement which will be inclusive. If we use the, the next few months, uh, four months, until, until September, four or five months, to agree on a political settlement that will benefit um, not only Afghanistan, but the entire region, um, a political settlement which is inclusive, which is representative, um, and which is, uh, you know, uh, as a result of which a government which respects all of its citizens, including women. Of course, no government will be sustainable um, and uh, will uh, last long if they deny 55% of their society. So we are hoping that we, in, through this political settlement, mm, um, we will be able to preserve rights um, and protect uh, human rights and women rights. However, of course, this is a positive scenario. There is a negative scenario as well. And the negative scenario is if, if the peace process, for whatever reasons, fail, and we are not able to uh, agree politically, 
Then, of course, escalation of war. Um, something that, uh, you know, we, we certainly, as citizens, as people who have lived in this country for, for, for our life, we really want our, our neighbors to uh, support us not to go to that situation. Especially, once again, I would like to reiterate the rule of, uh, the important rule that Pakistan and Pakistani government and their, their people can play in terms of ensuring that we do not experience the, the worst case um, scenario. Because in the worst case scenario, it is not only Afghanistan that will be um, in chaos. Uh, we know that already, I mean, the impact of the war um, has not only impacted Afghanistan's economy, but also Pakistan as well. So therefore, it's a common, a common war. Uh, we will uh, succeed in this together. And hopefully, with our joint efforts, we will be able to bring peace. That is going to um, certainly create a new chapter in our relationship between Afghanistan and Pakistan and change the narrative, not only at the political level, but also down in the society as well. I thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you so much, Fozir Kufi, for sharing us all the details and how uh, women are playing their role in the peace process and what all um, that you said that, you know, this is something which is very interesting and I, I would say something uh, that we are all looking forward to is the, the deep relations that Pakistan and Afghanistan share and the readiness to actually build on these relations for sustainable peace, the readiness to forget all the past, the readiness that this peace process and it's, uh, you know, especially after the withdrawal, how both countries can work together. Um, I would want to that, you know, we start our panel discussions because we have our distinguished uh, panelists over here. And since we're talking about the relations, building up um, relations between Afghanistan and Pakistan and talking about that, you know, for sustainable peace, it's people to people contact as the um, ambassador had also mentioned. Is it just going to be the people and to people contact? Is it just going to be um, you, you know, um, self, uh, commonality uh, aspects or commonality sectors that we all want to actually work in for strengthening ties, or is it going to be, you know, greater than that? As Salman had mentioned, the Director General of Park Afghan Youth Forum, that it's probably time now to, to look, look into this relationship through uh, the prism of uh, geo-economic rather than geopolitical. Uh, we will also have a discussion on this. Let me first introduce the distinguished panelists that we have from Afghanistan side. We have Mr. Fateh Gul Shinwari, who's the Chancellor of University, Jalalabad. We have Mr. Abdul Latif Mal Shinwari, who's the Chancellor at Al Taqwa University. On this panel, we have Mr. Sangar Amirzada, who's the Director, Youth Contact Group of Peace, for Peace. Nazir Mohammed Mutmail Saab, who's Senior Journalist and Author. We have Sami Yusufzai, who's a senior journalist again from Afghanistan. We have Ubaidullah Bahir, a senior political analyst. And we also have Ubaidullah Akhunzada, the head of Peace and Security Committee, uh, C4A. From the Pakistani side, we have Dr. Talat Shabir Saab, who's the director of Pakistan China Desk, um, ISISA. Or we have Dr. Shabana Fayaz Sahiba, director of the Department of DSS Kaide Azam University. We have Dr. Salma Malik Saiba, who's the Associate Professor at the Kaidi Azam University. We have Dr. Khuram Iqbal Saab, who's the Head of Department of IR at the NDU, that's the National Defense University. And Tahir Khan Saab, who is our very senior seasoned journalist or political analyst. Bhi hai. Um, I would also, um, before you know, we, we get into the discussion and we go into a question on secession that I would like to actually raise. Um, I would like Dr. Talat Shabir, jinka bahut varied um, Makongi career bhi hai, unka bada experience bhi hai. He's director China Pakistan Study Center Institute of Strategic Studies, Islamabad. And um, where he actually oversees research and advocacy on all facets of Pakistan-China relations. Kyunki yahaan par baat ho rahi hai Pak Afghan relations ki. And we're talking about how, uh, as Salman had also raised this, in terms of CPEC also. So the first presentation Dr. Talat would like to give before we move forward with our question and answer and interactive session with all of you. G. Dr. Talat. Uh, thank you very much, Nadia. It's a real pleasure to be on this forum to discuss uh, uh, something about peace process in Afghanistan. Uh, before that, I would like, would like to thank uh, Salman Javed also, who has uh, invited me to join this forum. Uh, I don't have a formal presentation, but I just would like to make a few comments, um, rather random comments, uh, before uh, we move forward. Uh, 
since we discuss uh, a fun peace process and i am a china watcher so i would like to mention few few assertions that i see from chinese perspective uh, on on the peace process that is going on first of all uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, we know that there are two important development, developments going on simultaneously at the moment one is a fun peace process all the factions of uh, afghan uh, afghanistan their neighbors and many countries across the world are struggling hard to bring peace to uh, the war ravaged uh, afghanistan and this struggle is ongoing for a long time and uh, two decades have passed that afghanistan is uh, looking for peace second important development that uh, we saw was the uh, one that change in president presidency uh, in the united states and uh, joe joe biden's very recent statement of withdrawing troops from afghanistan uh, which may start by uh, you know next week uh, but will terminate by september 11 we will be marking 20 years of uh, the afghan war now when i look look at peace process from chinese perspective uh, so I, i think china is vigilant to potential instability in afghanistan so is everybody else so are we in pakistan and china thinks that instability in afghanistan can seriously damage uh, security of chinese uh, region bordering region with afghanistan so the national interest of china is that and geo strategic motivation is security beijing also focuses on political stability and lowering of violence you know uh, as we see uh, china uh, largely wants peace in the in the periphery and uh, afghanistan is a very important uh, country in the periphery uh we will want to talk much about bigger but uh, china had in the past been uh, very concerned about problem uh, that separatists create in, uh, in the in the xinjiang province of china and there were linkages uh, of those terrorist activities inside afghanistan which was very concerning for china as well as for the region uh one thing is very important that all along these uh, these this this war uh, in two decades of war china has been uh, a neutral actor in the in the in the war so i think china has over a period of time developed a kind of consensus with all the factions in afghanistan including uh, taliban and the uh, government in kabul so using that leverage that china has with uh, all the factions i think china is committed to play a constructive role in stabilizing the country which is i'm i'll mention in the end that it is in the interest of china also afghanistan wasn't part of belt and road initiative initially in the chinese thinking but uh, later on or as of now china thinks that if uh, afghanistan is peaceful and cpac is extended to uh, afghanistan and beyond this this will be making a great arrangement uh, for a chinese expansion towards central asia and beyond uh china and afghanistan is a rich country and uh, we we know it's a mineral rich country and uh, definitely china has uh, i like the rest of the world also has i on the mineral wealth of uh, uh, afghanistan and many uh, important uh, commitments were also made in 2008 and 2011 for various uh, invest investment related commitments are also made in afghanistan and that was actually uh, reflective of china's interest in afghanistan now but there still there there's there are many uh, ifs and buts in the in the peace process i wish uh, that all the efforts made for the peace because afghanistan people of afghanistan deserve peace more than anything else and but there there is a cautious approach by by china because it's extremely you know since uh, it is in the on it is ongoing process and uh, chinese are looking at this very cautiously but very interest with very interest 
uh, that that when American forces move and there's a very credible, very stable uh, governance system is in fact imposed in, in Afghanistan to maintain that peace and stability. So the peace and stability is, ladies and gentlemen, um, bottom line that uh, powers around in the region and across the world they wish to have in Afghanistan. So at the moment then, uh, there are opportunities, there are threats, things are unfolding, maybe in times to come, we have a better better uh, view of Afghanistan, peace process, and uh, then people or countries have better choices to make. Like, uh, in my opinion, uh, peaceful Afghanistan will support the development of Afghanistan as a regional, uh, regional force. And China looks at Afghanistan from this point of view, that if there is a stable Afghanistan, if there is an extension of CPAC, if there is Belt and Road Initiative to go beyond to Central Asia, Afghanistan is a very important country. Uh, Afghanistan, uh, China has very, I, as I already mentioned, China has impressive ability to reconcile with political groups across the, across the region and because of their non-intervention policy and China has been involving itself in the political processes and so is China involved in peace process and there are a number of meetings that China hosted and there are a number of meetings that China participated outside China also. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, last point that I would wish to make is that for uh, a number of occasions, our leadership, military leadership and political leadership in Pakistan has reiterated that peace in Afghanistan means peace in Pakistan. And likewise, I heard uh, various uh, political figures of Afghanistan that now realize that peace in Pakistan also peace is, means peace in Afghanistan. Now, this realization of peace, bilateral peace between Afghanistan and uh, Afghanistan is very important. And this forum, uh, and like, like of this forum, many other forums like this, they, they are playing a very constructive role in, in, in fact, initiating such um, uh, momentum to, to such, such uh, cooperative, cooperative ventures. One, well, if this, this is the peaceful region, if uh, there's a peace between the two countries, China is not likelihood will come to help not only Afghanistan, but China will help, uh, you know, uh, CPEC to expand towards uh, uh, Afghanistan. And of course, with Afghanistan, we will be able to link to Central Asia and, and beyond. So uh, the bottom line is peace, peace process. And uh, the peace process has to ensure that uh, uh, after American forces leave, leave Afghanistan, there's complete tranquility, peace, and stability in Afghanistan. And that will only the time that economic activity and development activities will take place in Afghanistan. And that is the time I think we in Pakistan and you in Afghanistan are waiting anxiously to see. Thank you very much, very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Nadia. Uh, Dr. Talat, thank you so much. And you're absolutely right. The realization that you said that, you know, peace in Afghanistan means peace uh, in Pakistan and peace in Pakistan means peace in Afghanistan. No, that is why, you know, the title of today's webinar is Shared Destiny. The, that's the realistic approach. That's how both the countries need to work together for sustainable peace. And after the withdrawal, as you know, there are many questions. And now with the panelists, and with, uh, of course, Dr. Talat, you being with us, we are going to ask a lot of questions that, that probably are in the mind of people. And there are also, you know, people who are watching this webinar also are raising questions. I would like that you can use, uh, you know, you can speak in your own language uh, if you would like to, because this is a multilingual platform. We allow that to happen so that, you know, we can have a better connectivity with people also through the forum. So uh, what I would like to ask is, um, I, I would start with you, uh, Mr. Fateh Gulshanwari, as I had mentioned, the uh, panelists that we have. Uh, and uh, He received his bachelor's degree from the Faculty of Education, Nangarhar University, also received his master's degree in Pashto Literature from Nangarhar University, Faculty of Languages and Literature. Mr. Shanwari has been active in peace, reconciliation, social justice for many years, developed a number of programs in this regard through the Afghanistan New Generation Organization. So, um, uh, you know, I would like first, we, we give brief bios 
as soon as i start asking questions uske baad you know we can continue the questions and we can take this discussion since we are all talking about peace uh, mr fatih gulshanwari you know pakistan's major achievement i'd say in the peace talk is getting the taliban to the negotiating table and pakistan's facilitation efforts has also improved the relation between uh, pakistan and the us now while pakistan will likely stay involved in the intra afghan talks and as mentioned by everyone that you know peace in both countries will lead to peace in the region so can you see its limited role in future due to not so cordial relation with kabul or you think that this is what we all have to work in together in order to you know build that uh, uh, confidence and build that relation for sustainable peace yeah uh, bismillah rahman rahim uh, according to humanitarian principles and rules uh, life in peace is the basic right of living beings mankind has always uh, been struggling uh, to achieve this right of living and most of them are successful in in the in their mission our afghan community has been uh, the victim of war for last couple of decades and the reasons and the factors of this war are critical clear for all of us which are weak governance poverty ignorance lack of civil education lack of education awarenesses injustice and no strong commitment of uh, regional countries and neighbor countries uh, now it's finding open all of us to discuss on these factors and take serious steps uh, for the finding proper solutions for them uh, it is directly required to separate this peace phenomenon uh, uh, from the influence of political and religious hands every individuals of afghanistan to take active part in peace process and it is the only way through which we can bring a durable and everlasting peace to our nation it's also very much important to mention that our neighboring countries can play a significant role in peace process because most the anti afghan government groups have been living and are being supported by the neighboring countries so i personally request from this platform to all of our neighbors to support the ongoing peace process it is completely impossible without their support and cooperation it has been a debated and found the afghan war is not in the interest of any nation yeah, right. and in peace negotiation the first step is a ceasefire but still our government in the taliban not reached to a ceasefire in this regard our neighbor and brother country pakistan has a strong positive role to motivate or force the taliban key leaders for the long term ceasefire this is the fact that the relations between pakistan and afghanistan has been injured from the couple of decades because of the war because of the uh, the the civil war i think such opportunities like the forum could re revive the injured relations i hope the pakistan youth forum to arrange such such programs in the future thank you uh, uh, fatih gulshanwari sahab uh, you know the way that you mentioned but what, what did you see a uh, role of pakistan after the withdrawal of the foreign troops how do you see this role you said that you know bringing taliban to the table and also saying that negotiating the peace deals and you know uh, pakistan plays an important role even uh, by uh, by negotiating the deal by, by by you know advocating the ceasefire what role do you see after the withdrawal yeah uh, 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 it's the fact that the pakistan is uh, uh, important roles in afghanistan uh, uh, peace process uh, 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 that i mentioned uh, most of the uh, anti government groups are living in pakistan or in the tribal areas uh, uh, around the uh, uh, the pakistan borders uh, pakistan could easily motivate Uh, uh the taliban uh, for uh, for negotiation or for the ceasefire and, and also after the uh, the us troops uh, uh pakistan have uh, has a important rules uh, uh, to, to bring a peace uh, to bring the taliban uh, to a negotiation table to 
to Afghan government. Okay, uh, Dr. Shivana Faya Saiba, who is from the Pakistani side, uh, the Director Department of DSS Saidi Azam University. Because we're talking about shared destiny, and I wanted that, you know, first the preamble that we could lay in, in uh, amongst all of you and discuss the peace process, and then we take it to what all areas that we can, uh, you know, work together in collaboration and cooperation to strengthen our ties, to build that sustainable peace that we're looking at. I would want to know that due to, you know, frequent mismatches in expectations and interest of Afghanistan and Pakistan are often on, not on the same page, I'd say, about the key policy issues. Uh, despite Pakistan's considerable cooperation on the Afghan peace process. Uh, you know, with the withdrawal of the U.S. troops in September, what steps do you suggest on both sides, from both the countries, to minimize this discount? Dr. Shabana, can you hear me? I think Dr. Shabana, Dr. Salma, if you are listening to me, then probably you could take this question. Ji, uh, uh, thank you so much for bringing up this question. And uh, I think your question has a contextual background that has also been indirectly and directly pointed out by the uh, His Excellency, Afghan Ambassador to Islamabad and our other uh, panelists. Uh, uh, I think to begin with the peace process that is the ongoing with all its hitches on both the sides, whether it is Taliban, the external factors, neighbors and the, uh, and the present uh, Afghanistan uh, regime or the government in place. And above all, the role of civil society that is uh, uh, it's very much existent and vibrant in Afghanistan. Uh, we have to understand that this withdrawal can have positives and the negatives uh, implications for the whole region, especially the neighborhoods and the outsiders. Uh, the most important factor I think we need to understand is when we speak of peace is that what kind of peace and shared destiny we are looking for in Afghanistan and also in its neighborhood. And uh, to understand that, we have to understand that there are pieces of peace, P-I-E-C-E-S, pieces of peace. It is not a peace that is the uh, definition that is given in today's webinar. It means that there are diverse interpretation of peace, that unless we don't reconcile with these differences, these point of views, uh, you know, we cannot move forward. As has been pointed out by earlier Afghan uh, participants, uh, respected uh, Afghani national, that he has very rightly pointed out, and it, we have been hearing this a lot in the narrative as well, the feeling of victimhood that persists on the Afghan side, that we have, uh, we have been used as a pitch by all the outsiders. And then you can also see the victimhood narrative working on Pakistan side as well. This, uh, we have been hosting the refugees, will continue if the uh, civil war comes in place after withdrawal. And what we have did is clash and code, drugs and smuggling and all that stuff. You know? So there is a different narration of victimhood working on both sides. The important point we have to register as the policymaker, uh, you know, sitting on the government side and the policy analyst or the acad academia side is that there has to be a bridge and the bridge can only be formed if there is a, a perception that you have to exist in diversity. Unless you don't respect the basic forms of statehood, I'm not saying the nationhood because it is very debatable whether the nation is a state or state is a nation. I'm primarily saying that you have to respect the boundaries, sovereignty of your neighbors. So this is very important. It can be a border disputes, it can be skirmishes, it can be giving uh, sanctuaries to uh, different warring or non-state actors operating across the lines within the regions and across the, uh, you know, at the larger scale. So this U.S. withdrawal, as stated, pointed out by President Biden is, is going to unravel a lot of complexities the last two decades have existed, have created on the Afghan service. And I've been having experience of visiting Kabul and interacting with uh, very esteemed scholars and policy makers from there from time to time. What we gather is that they are very confused where they are going to be left with. Women are confused. They are very, very upset. And, 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 and the other side in waiting is also upset that how they're going to rule. And the, and the neighbors are upset with what form of the governance we are going to do. 
in Afghanistan. So I think we have to play a very positive role and Pakistan is very well poised to play a positive role. But we must also register that there are also limits to Islamabad's influence on Taliban. You cannot, Taliban of the 40 years earlier are, no, are not the same. They were the Mujahideens and later the uh, other Taliban uh, uh, government that came afterwards in later stage of today's generation is totally different. Yes, Islamabad do have some sort of influence, but it is not that simply they will follow Islamabad uh, rules or the perceptions. So unless we recognize that, or also the Afghan side, the present system of governance and the civil society structures recognize the limits of Islamabad influence, we cannot move forward. I will stop here. Uh, this is a very important point that you raised, that you know we have to understand the limitations that even Islamabad has on the influence on Taliban. And based on that, do you think, a very short answer on this before I move forward, uh, Dr. Saiba, that based on this, if, if we do not understand the limitations, you think that you know the relationship can can go uh, not so cordial between the two nations, and the blame can begin again. I don't think so. I think both sides are treating very very carefully. Even the Taliban's not in government of Khantan at the moment. The one in government, the ones who are looking, you know, the spoilers and the neighbors and the external actors, all are playing, are trying to uh, treat the path very carefully. I don't think so there is going to be negativity. The all that require is the rigorous effort and the commitment not to interfere in each other pitch and understand that the national interest of one country may not be the same as the national interest of another country. But this doesn't mean that at the, by Pursuing your national interest, you damage the sovereignty of others. Absolutely right, and that's a very important point. And um, Mr. Mohammed Muthmain is with us. He's an independent writer and the analyst, author, and peace um, activist. Bhi hai. He regularly contributes to the Afghan media and appears on national and international TV channels and talk shows to comment on current affairs on a host of issues such as the peace process, conflict in Taliban. Um, Mohammed Mutamil uh, Saab, you're, you're listening to our participants and what we are discussing. Uh, shared destiny is what we are looking at. So I would say that how important will it be to create uh, the areas to collaborate and cooperate uh, between Pakistan and Afghanistan after this withdrawal? There is a peace process that Pakistan is is working at along, um, you know, with Afghanistan and other stakeholders. And then after this withdrawal, as, um, you know, Dr. Saiba had said, that, you know, there will be a host of complexities that will unravel, and which is very right also. But do you think that there are certain areas that both the countries could concentrate on to strengthen ties further and, you know, build up together? Because I, uh, I believe, you can comment on this, the dependency of Afghanistan and Pakistan will then increase on each other in terms of peace, development, prosperity. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Tolo gadunwalo ta salamuna. Zee bakhli khabari pashto ki waka ma chi shatawzi si ke daisi bia urusta kasu pa pashto ki mushkil lari agui taba bia text to ligi ya pa har surat. Muhima mauzo da la deru kaluno rahi si. Do you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Uh, Ladiru Kaluno, Rahisi, Afghanistan, or Pakistan, Termans, Kalastunzi, Kalamashkilat, or Kala Ariki Hivi, Da Dwara Desi, Gawandi Hiwadunadi, Chi, Musulman, Gawandi Hiwadunadi, Aw Musulman, Purbal, Musulman, Bandi, Zini Hakunalari, Zini Halak Dawai, Chi, Wali Pakistan, Muhajaro, Tazai, or Kalaida. Aldach does Mujhak the Shifakistan Muhtazairaki, the Shoravi Itihad, the Ragal Permahal Bandi, the Pur Pakistan Wajibola, Auda the Musulmanano Pebandi Haku, the Piran Bandi Wajibo, Auda the Musulman Pebandi Haku Chalta, the Muhajaruta Zaiwarki, Kalashi America, Pur Afghanistan Bandi Hamlawa Krala, does Mush Pur Pakistan Bandi Haku Chalta Hara Afghanan, Che the America La Para, the Turistano Polisku, Awita Zaiwarki. التوس هم دی شوروی جغرافیا پر محل باندی پنزنه تا اتم میلیون افغانان مهاجر ولو، او موج هر سلوک او چلان چه دی پاکستانی ولس لخوانه لبغانان و سرسوی داشت چلان دو. 
د حکومتونو ترمنځ چلندونه توپیر لري او تر هغه وخت مهاجر التارام و ترسو چې د ډاکټر نجیب الله حکومت سقوط کاو بیا وروسته چې امریکا پر افغانستان باندې حمله وکړه بیا هم یو ګنډ شمیر افغانان پاکستان ته مهاجر شول د پاکستان نظامي ورتیا د پاکستان پوځي ورتیا په پاکستان کې د مدارسو ډیروالی او په پاکستان کې د ولس لیوالتا ل مسلمانو سره دا دا هغه سید چې د افغانانو او پاکستانی ولس لپاره نجدیوالی لاوري زموږ کلتوري اړیکې دي پښتانه او په ټول کې د اسیا وسیدون کې له بلوسو سره له پنجاب سره هغه کلتوري اړیکې یو بل ته معلومې دي همدارنګه پاکستان ته په کار ده چې د افغانستان په مشکلاتو کې د حلولو کوشش وکړي نه دا چې رقابت وکړي همدارنګه افغانستان هم باید رقابت ونه کړي بلکې دواړه غاړې کوشش وکړي چې د غستون حل شي په دواړو هیوادونو کې د روسانو د حملې په وخت کې او د امریکا د حملې په وخت کې نشنلستي او قومي تحرکات زیات شولو دغه نشنلستي او قومي تحرکات چې د غرب او د شرق لخوا نه ملاتړ درلود دا نه د افغانستان په ګټه ده او نه د پاکستان په ګټه ده همدا اوس په پاکستان کې هم دغسې حرکتونه لیدل کېږي که په افغانستان کې نامنی وي دا حرکتونه به ډېرېږي مثلا کله چې روسانو پر افغانستان باندې حمله وکړله پاکستان که افغان مهاجرو ته ځای ورکوي بل طرف ته د ببره کارمل او ډاکټر نجیب د حکومتونو پر مهال باندې بلوسو او مریانو ته په هلمند کې او عوامي نشنل پارټي ته په کابل کې ځای ورکول شو کله چې امریکا پر افغانستان باندې حمله وکړله او افغان مهاجر لا هم په افغانستان په پاکستان کې پاتې ولو بیا هم په کندهار کې بلوسانو ته او په کونړ او ځینو نورو ځایونو کې د پاکستان هغه ډلې چې د پاکستان ضد ولې هغوی ته ځای ورکړل شو نو کله چې جګړه وي کله چې نامنی وي هغه نشنلستي تحرکات زیاتېږي دا نه د افغانستان په ګټه ده او نه د پاکستان په ګټه ده او تر ډېره پورې په افغانستان کې هند د پښتنو په خلاف باندې تر پالیسي درلودلې ده او د شمال تلوالې د ملاتړ پالیسي ده برعکس پاکستان د طالبانو د ملاتړ یا په مجموع کې د پښتنو د ملاتړ پالیسي درلودلې ده په کار ده چې هند هم په خپلې تګلارې باندې فکر وکړي او پاکستان هم په کار ده چې بیا د سې پېښې ورسي لکه د مجاهدینو په وخت چې یوازې حزب اسلامي سره ډېره همکاري کوله او بیا وروسته د پاکستان سفارت په پاکستان په افغانستان کې وسوځل شي پاکستان هم په کار ده چې له ټولو قومونو سره ښې اړیکې جوړې کړي قوي اردو په دواړو هیوادونو کې که سم پاکستان قوي اردو لري او افغانان زړور خلک دي که د افغانستان اردو په حال سي او خپلواک اردو وي نه چې د امریکا لخوا روزل سوي وي نه چې د روسان لخوا روزل سوي نه چې د نورو هیوادو دا دواړو ملکونو ته ګټه کوي او د دواړو ملکونو په ګټه باندې ده له طالبانو سره د پاکستان ښې اړیکې که په پخوا یا په اوس کې دا پر ځای باندې پرېکړه ده او د ډاکټر اشرف غني لخوا نه سیاسي حلې ځلې چې پاکستان ورسره ډېل وکړي او د ده حکومت د نورو کلونو لپاره ومني پاکستان دا ورسره ونه منل دا هم پر ځای باندې پرېکړه ده ځکه د ډاکټر صاحب اشرف غني حکومت په نړیواله سطحه باندې په انزوا کې ده ولسونه بیل دی د افغان او پاکستان ولسونو هر وخت یو بل بل سره ښه چلندونه لري یو له بل سره ښې اړیکې لري حکومتونه توپیر کوي ولې زموږ هیله دا ده چې پاکستان هم تر ټولو لویه ستونزه افغانانو ته د د ډیورن پر کرښه باندې تګ را تګ ده که پاکستان د ډیورن په کرښه باندې اسانتیا را نه ولي دا اوږدمهاله ستونزه پاتې کېږي له دې نه هغه کړی چې د دوو قومونو د دوو ملتونو تر ز پیدا کوي استفاده کوي که پاکستان غواړي چې له افغانانو سره ښې اړیکې او دغه فاصلې کمې شي نو پرته له شکه چې دی باید د ډیورن پر پل د ډیورن په کرشه باندې د افغانانو د تګ راتګ لپاره اسانتیا راولي همدارنګه افغان حکومت د پاکستان د اوسېدونکو لپاره دغه ستونزه حل کړي په خاص ډول باندې د ډیورن دواړو کرشو ته پښتنو لپاره 
افغانستان اقتصادی لارا پر افغانستان باندې ده او د افغانستان اقتصادی لارا پر پاکستان باندې ده تر سو چې په افغانستان کې سوله را نسی تر سو چې د افغانستان او پاکستان اړی کې ور نه غول سی دا دواړه هیوادونه اقتصادی پرمختګ نسی کولای پاکستان که کراچی او گوادر بندر لری او افغانستان ورت ارتیا لری بل خوا پاکستان ضرورت لری چې منزنی آسیا تا او لاغزین اروپا تا خپل, خپل مالون او توی که ورسوی نو دا لره پر افغانستان دیده ترسو چه ده دی ده دوارو ترمنز امن او سول نوی راغلی داستون زبادوام پیدا کوی او پا دی باندی باید فکر وسی You, you, you've said a lot of points and I would like that, you know, we take this forward a little bit. Uh, the, you have been very critical of the Afghan government. However, um, let me just uh, summarize a little bit for all the other participants. Uh, Mr. Nazir Mohammed says the behavior of Pakistani people are very satisfied. Uh, we have cultural ties, Pashtuns have ties with Baloch and other ethnic groups. Pakistan must try to engage and solve Afghan issue, not competition. Afghanistan should do the same about Pakistan. A nationalist war and the war going in Afghanistan impacts Pakistan too. Uh, Mr. Nasser also said that, uh, you know, Pakistan's relation with Taliban is va valid. Ashraf Bani's government is in isolation on international level. The major issue between Afghanistan and Pakistan is the travel on Durand Line. He says that Pakistan must facilitate the Durand Line travel. So, uh, Nazim Mohammed Sahib, these are your valid points. And because we have our uh, Dr. Abdul Latif Nazari also, from Afghanistan, and we have Puram Iqbal Sahab, we have uh, Dr. Salma. Just, just, have... just a, little, a little bit clarification. Uh, yeah. uh, during the uh, uh, Russian attack on Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan uh, gave a place to Afghan refugees. It was a good uh, decision. Uh, but uh, Babra Karmal and Dr. Najib gave a place to uh, Baloch and uh, uh, National Awami Party. The same, uh, they, they had uh, 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 the problem between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Uh, after that, when America attacked in Afghanistan, uh, again, there were uh, refugees in Afghanistan. But the same in Afghanistan, they're given a place to, to Baloch and to some uh, nationalist uh, 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 radicals uh, in, in Afghanistan. So uh, it is a problem from bro both sides. Better to solve the problem between Afghanistan and uh, Pakistan and the, the big uh, problem is uh, the different uh, cross land. Uh, if Pakistan uh, give facilities to, uh, to Afghan, uh, the, 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 the problem will be uh, decreased. If there is a problem on the uh, uh, different cross land, uh, there, will be, there will be a problem between uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan. Uh, so uh, there was uh, other uh, okay. uh, thing, but uh, due to time, uh, it's okay. <laughs> Luna, Nessa, we'll come back to you. Uh, very well said that if there is no peace in Afghanistan, Pakistan would not have way to Central Asia and Afghanistan do not have, uh, you know, we all realize that peace in both countries are meant for each other. We, and that is what the shared destiny is about. That is what peace we're talking about. That this is how uh, we can move forward. It is not only good for both the countries, but also for the region. And um, we have with us Ambassador Aziz Ahmed Khan sir. We have Dr. Abdul Latif Nazari with us. We have other distinguished guests also who would like to throw some light on this. Um, Ambassador sir, you've been listening to all what has been said, um, you know, up till now since the webinar began. I would really want that you know you could you could share your thoughts. That we're talking about uh, people to people contact. We're talking about education sector. We're talking about trade. We're talking about you know civil society. We're talking about women empowerment. How much do you attach weightage um, to military cooperation? Because military cooperation is set to open up, you know, alliances. It's set to, uh, set to open up other opportunities. Do you think Pakistan, Afghanistan should think of a military cooperation or, or is it in the offing uh, that you know of? G. Ambassador, sir. We are just trying to get his audio, Ambassador Aziz Ahmed Khan sir. I think there is some technical issue before we can we can get in touch with him, Doctor. Can you hear me now, uh, Ambassador? Sir? I, I can I hear think you now. You should sir. be able to hear me now. We can, we can. Can you hear me now? 
जी जी एम्बेसडर साहब वी कैन हियर यू अस्सलाम वालेकुम ओके सॉरी आई एम आई एम टेक्नोलॉजिकली ए लिटिल ओके अस्सलाम वालेकुम आई एम टेक्नोलॉजिकली ए लिटिल बैकवर्ड सॉरी फॉर दैट आई हैव हर्ड विद लिसन टू द प्रेजेंटेशन सो फार द ग्रेट इंटरेस्ट एंड आई थिंक अ लॉट ऑफ एरिया हैज बीन कवर्ड talking about pakistan uh, pakistan afghan relations i think uh, at at one time a long time ago when i used to be the ambassador there i used to tell people that pakistan and afghanistan at people to people will always have excellent relations even if the government try to spoil them and try to inter- interfere them it is in the nature of uh, the societies of the two countries and the common heritage and common history that we share that the two people of two countries will always be close to each other will always be cooperating with each other and that is why the prime example of that is that whenever there is some trouble in afghanistan the first country that they afghans think of uh, to take refuge is in is pakistan so we need to we need to keep that uh, that in mind uh, and we should we should uh, see that these relations are further further enhanced and further developed of course at the moment everything is subject subject to the peace process in afghanistan until peace is not established in afghanistan nothing will, uh, nothing of much substance can happen between, between the two countries and uh, the only way peace can come to pakistan afghanistan is by afghans themselves they have to negotiate that peace of pans know how to that uh, do that they have lived in the in their tribal societies and in their tribal groups for, for centuries and they have always lived peacefully barring some some moments of uh, disturbances in the past so we should just help the afghan afghans uh, come together and right. find a peaceful resolution right. we need to tell the taliban also that they cannot rule afghanistan alone however hard they may try at the same time the other afghan groups the afghan government and other groups need to realize that taliban are a part of afghan society they have a large following and that that they need to be promoted how we will achieve that is probably let to create the environment where afghans can have discussion with each other and from the sidelines uh, help them with friendly persuasion no uh, keeping talking about uh, this that uh, uh, pakistan has a lot of influence with afghanistan is wrong pakistan has good relations with the taliban yes but it doesn't mean that pakistan can force the taliban to come to an agreement just as pakistan cannot force the afghan government however good relations we may have with them to uh, force to right. a certain kind of peace settlement let the afghans decide that as far as bilateral relations are concerned i think his excellency the afghan ambassador talked about the mechanism of apex which exists where all difficult subjects can be discussed and should be discussed we need more interaction at the government to government level and we need to sit down and sincerely resolve issues see that there are a lot of issues i mean trans trade is, is one issue afghanistan looks at it at, from a different perspective we look at it from from, from a different perspective both have logic about it both uh, have certain points that need to be clarified they need to sit down and 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 discuss, discuss that trans trade for afghanistan is essential we as uh, as their uh, uh, way to the sea uh, we need Need to facilitate that we have taken steps in the past to facilitate that. Our problem is that a lot of Afghan transit trade is used for smuggling in Pakistan, and we oh, Afghans have to policy. work out a formula with us how that can be prevented so that Pakistan economy is not adversely affected. Number two, as far as Afghanistan and Pakistan trade is concerned, there is tremendous scope. Uh, there is uh, a lot of trade has trade jumped a lot uh, in the recent past. Of course, part part. Of, uh, part of that jump was due to the war, uh, the, the war economy and the construction that was going on. Uh, they could not have remained at such a high 
stable, but still the, the, the trade between the two countries, I think, should be facilitated as much as possible. Pakistan took some very valid steps uh, and good steps at one time when, for example, instead of requiring Afghans to open a letter of credit in, in dollars, we, we shifted to the Pakistan rupees, which helped Afghans because Pakistani rupees used in Afghanistan done just as much as their own currency as their own currency is we need to facilitate their trade we need to see that impediments are removed there is a very good part, part of one chamber of commerce uh, based in Peshawar, and they are doing very useful work and they should this is trade today is not government to government it should be a private sector and the private sector should work out the best way so that the trade is uh, beneficial beneficial for both the countries Ambassador, education, okay. once again, uh, a lot of uh, students are studying. Yeah. 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 A lot of students are studying in uh, Pakistan. Some Pakistani students are not here. Can you hear me? Ji, ji, we can hear you. We can hear you. You are you're talking about the different. I was just, I was just, big, I was just beginning to talk about education sector. I think there are about twenty thousand or so students uh, uh, of, uh, of our students studying in Pakistan. We should encourage right. as much. Of course, the top trouble is that there is not enough to go around even for Pakistani students. So you know, however much one wants to accommodate the Afghan, uh, Afghan friends. Some grievances would always be there, just as Pakistani students have a lot of grievances about getting admission in the universities here. So, uh, if we treat them like our own, then they will have to go take the uh, take the difficulties also in, uh, in their stride. As far as health is concerned, again, tremendous cooperation between the two countries. If when I go to the pens uh, in here in Islamabad, it's full of Afghans. When I go to uh, Shifa International Hospital. They're full of Afghans. They come over. They have, uh, and I think the embassy is providing special, give special assistance uh, for the visa facilities for people require, uh, requiring uh, consultations for health, for health reasons. And we should we should expand that visa facilities further. In fact, I personally feel that we should work very hard towards to reaching a stage where we do not need any visas. That an Afghan can come. Without a visa to Pakistan, and a Pakistani can go to Afghanistan without a visa. This visa is totally, totally unnecessary. But we need to okay. have uh, work it out, and I'm sure once peace is achieved and a settlement takes place, it, uh, this will happen. The two right. countries can do a lot with each other. The two countries have uh, have uh, a lot in common. People know each other very well. Uh, well, um, a lot of Afghan speak Urdu. But there is a huge population of Pashto speakers in Pakistan, more than uh, what is in Afghanistan. So the commonalities are there. The thing is, we need to establish good faith with each other. See that even if there are problems, it's not because one side or the other is doing, creating those problems deliberately. 90% of the time, problems arise because we don't have the control on the situation, which is an inherent part of a developing economy in a developing country. And uh, right. we should we should just see that we have good faith and talk to each other with the, with that good faith. I think I'll probably I mean there's a I can go on for hours on this subject, but I would probably stop. <laughs> exactly, and we could just go on listening to you because there's a lot that we we all um, you know realize the need to build together these relations and there's a lot that one can say that how we can improve the relations for sustainable peace and how we can build on these relations. Thank you so much, Ambassador Sir. Uh, before I move on to uh, Dr. Abdul Latif Nazari, I would really like to thank all of our distinguished panelists who are being very patient and, and we are also wanting to hear uh, you know what you have to say. Dr. Salma, I will come to you. Dr. Khuram Idbal, you have to be a session with you. It is necessary. Tahir Khan, you are with us. So that's why you also please be a little patient and we are coming to you. Ubaidullah Khunzada, Ubaidullah Bahir, Sami Yusuf Zai. I know that you know there is so much uh, to add on to this. 
and we are definitely going to just come to you. Thank you so much for being patient. Dr. Abdul Latif Nazari Saab, you know, the scope is a lot. And in terms of uh, economy, that's something, economic development or growing economies, that's, I think, the basic ingredient for prosperity, for sustainable peace. Uh, and as also mentioned, you know, the formal trade between Afghanistan and Pakistan, the quantum is too low. How do you think that trade cooperation should be built and, uh, and could be done? in order to uh, uh, you know, develop not only strength and ties, but also for prosperity and for sustainable peace. How important do you think this trade cooperation could be? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Taasita da baas tolo gadunwalo. Ta salam ehtiram urandikum. Aho da paak afghan federation na che da de baas da paare zamina saazi kere manana kaum. Uh, before to uh, answer specifically to your questions, just I have uh, a background uh, information about Park Afghan, and then I will come to answer specifically your question. Tasi puige che Pakistan or Afghanistan dini kulturi ekstasi nejadi arik killeri. او دا ډیر تاریخی اړی کې دی دا ډیر نش کې دون کې اړی کې دی د دې په څنګ کې تاسې کو وګورئ د پاکستان او د افغانستان ټولنیز جوړښت یا سوسل سوشل سټرکچر چې دی دا ډیر زیات تاسې وګورئ یو په پاکستان کې د پاکستان د فوز او استخباراتو او حکومت دی د بلې خوا نه سیاسي ګوندونه دي د بلې خوا نه پاکستان کې Dr. Latif, I, I think we've, we've lost your audio. Um, I'll take the same thing to Dr. Abdul Latif Nazarista. Can you hear me, Dr. Abdul Latif Nazarista, if you can? Uh, you would like to add on to this my specific question on trade? How we could in, improve and uh, do you not think that, you know, this is something that could uh, build up sustainable peace and even long-lasting peace? Because if we, we're going to cooperate economically, um, there's a lot that we can achieve. G, Dr. Abdul Latif Nazarisa, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, you are having me? Okay, we lost, Dr. Abdul Latif Malsa, we lost your audio and that's why I had to transfer the question to another uh, panelist. But if you can hear us now, go ahead. Complete, yeah, complete yeah. yours and then we can move further. نو زما یادونه دا وه چې په پاکستان کې اصلي حکومت چې کوي او پالیسي او ستراتیژي تطبیقوي هغه فوز او استخبارات دي سیاسي ګوندونو رول کم دی ملکي حکومت رول ضعیفه دی ملت رول ضعیف دی نو په دغسې یو حالت کې تاسې وګورئ مونږ د پاکستان سره ځینې تاریخي ستونزې لرو تاریخي ستونزې دا دي چې مونږ کله کله تاریخ په نه تکراروو به تاریخ باندې نه پوهېږو تاریخ تکراروو تاسې وګورئ د افغانستان جوړښت او کله چې برطانیا د سیمې نه د پاکستان جوړښت په دوا حالاتو کې راځي چې یو برخه د افغانستان نه بیلېږي بله د هندوستان نه نو اصلا د د پاکستان وجود په وړاندې د افغانستان د هغه وخت حکومت په ملګرو ملتو کې شکایت کوي د دې په څنګ کې هغه قبایل چې د پاکستان نه ناراضه دي هغه د افغانستان حکومت حمایه کوي نو دلته تاسې وګورئ بیا د حالت داسې راځي چې کله بیا په افغانستان کې دلته مشکلات پیدا کېږي روسان راځي د روسانو د راتګ نه حتی د داود خان په وخت کې پاکستان حکومت بېرته هلته تر روسپي افراطي ګروپونه تم ویلی د ګریډ ګیم نه راروسته کله چې دلته روسان ماتیږي او دلته په پاکستان کې اوه تنظیمونه جوړېږي او هلته هغه تنظیمونه چې هغه ملي ګرایا دي یا ملت پرست تنظیمونه دي هغوی د پاره ځای نشته یوازې افراطي تر روسي تنظیمونه تم ویلېږي هغه هم په اوو ګروپونو کې کله چې د نجیب حکومت سکوت کوي هغه لوبه چې پاکستان افغانستان کې وکړه مونږ یې شاهد و زمونږ د افغانستان ټول هغه اساسات د پاکستان په دستور باندې د منځه لاړه تاسې شاید وایي چې په افغانستان کې اردو تاسیسات 
ټول په هغه وخت کې د همدغه تنظیمونو لخوا چې پاکستان جوړ کړي د افغانستان د ورانېدو لپاره هغه موږ د لاسه ورکړه سیستمونه د لاسه ورکړه موږ درې سوه کلنه اردو د پاکستان په وسیله د منځه لاړه په وروستیو کې تاسو شاید وایي چې کله د طالبانو ډله د د امریکې په مالي Dr. Thief, there's a little, little problem in your audio, but we understand what you're saying, uh, Dr. Latif, uh, you know, what you mentioned about, uh, I just heard and I would like Dr. Salma Saiba to respond, um, um, you know, to Dr. Latif Malz, uh, I would say, he's still living in past and, and uh, I'm sure there are a lot of other people who would be living in past. Dr. Latif said that, you know, in Pakistan, the army makes the policies and it's not the political parties. He also mentioned about historical issue with Pakistan, that he feels that Afghanistan has been created from parts of India, from parts of Pakistan. And, you know, the, you know there is a lot of um, people who, who still have that kind of perception that is narrated by Dr. Latif. Um, so in the present process where Pakistan has really done a lot to bring um, you know, Taliban to the negotiating people, taking the peace process forward, doing everything they can. And as Dr. Shabana Fayaz also said that, you know, Islamabad has only a limited influence. We cannot be expected of doing everything. With this kind of um, historic living in history, I'd say, do you think that peace is going to be achievable or difficult? Thank you so much, Nadia. First of all, let me commend you for your excellent moderation. Uh, you are Thank doing you. such a great job. Uh, I am thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. Uh, the perfect person for this job. Congratulations. And thank you, thank Salman, you. Reema, and uh, the PAYF uh, for holding such an important uh, discussion. Uh, the best thing about uh, today's webinar is the opening statement by Afan Ambassador, His Excellency, um, uh, Ali Hail, who has really set the tone uh, in a different direction. Most of the conversations Pakistanis and Afghans have with each other uh, do concentrate on the past. The point our honorable speaker right before me has pointed out, all of the things that he's stating from his perspective are genuine. He has these grievances that he is voicing. Um, and I would also say that one part of the healing process that many a times we are talking about when, it, when we look at context transformation is to voice one's grievance and then come to a point where you uh, try and build the common understanding. Because if you don't communicate, you don't uh, communicate your grievance, the other side never knows what, what you want. But there's also this victim narrative that Dr. Shabana has talked about. But unfortunately, when it comes to India, uh, when it comes to Pakistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, or uh, the Troika that uh, that was mentioned by Sarabjit Sahab uh, in one of the questions, uh, the biggest tragedy is that we are continuously living in the past. When we look at, when we talk to Pakistanis, there is a huge list of grievances. When we talk to the Afghans, they have a huge list of grievances. Both sides feel that their grievances are genuine. Many a times they would be, we are not disputing that. But what we are trying to think of is to these uh, uh, platforms uh, for, from these fora is that can there be a space for future thinking, for positive thinking, for positive peace constituencies? Unfortunately, uh, the main hurdle between Pakistan and Afghanistan is that the constituency of conflict is so powerful. It is so uh, well entrenched. Uh, and when we have all these um, uh, hangovers of the past to distrust, uh, the many of the things that have been enlisted uh, by the speaker previously, uh, it kind of reinforces uh, this unfortunate sentiment between the two countries, which uh, makes the today and the tomorrow's generation not come to the negotiating table. They feel that, oh, this has always happened this way in the past. It is going to happen now. It is going to happen tomorrow. But the path to progress is what His Excellency's uh, keynote address and uh, Ambassador Aziz Ahmed Khan, who has served in, uh, in Afghanistan at one of the worst times uh, of Afghanistan, he has talked to the Taliban and he is also, and I'm not playing uh, the advocate of Taliban, many a times I have had candid conversations with the Khan Sab and I have asked him, uh, couldn't you convince Mullah Omar 
from not destroying the Bamiyan Buddhas, this thing and that thing. And many a times the answers he would give me uh, were very, very uh, mind boggling answers. They were answers that I would not expect from the Taliban leadership, but they were all part of a conflict profile, uh, which compelled them to do a lot of heinous activities which have totally taken over today and it is uh, casting its shadow on tomorrow as well. The path to progress is, um, yes, we cannot undo the past. There are a lot of things that have happened in the past. We have made mistakes. There have been miscommunication. There have been a lot of uh, um, external elements. I'm not indulging in conspiracy theory. But of course, when you have a conflict zone and Afghanistan's conflict history is not something that starts in 1979. It starts way beyond that, way before that. And unfortunately, Afghanistan has seen so many shades of war incessantly that you can, incessantly that you cannot divorce one phase of conflict in Afghanistan from another. And the Afghan people, whether they were displaced from their home, they became refugees, they went back to their home, they lived there in dismal conditions, they lived under the Taliban rule, something, God forbid, we can't even think of how you can live under extreme oppression. But the fact is that one must salute the resilience, the courage and the confidence of the Afghan people who believed in a favorable tomorrow, who believed in a future which would have uh, a bright, uh, uh, bright morning or bright sunshine. And that bright sunshine has yet to come fully. But the very fact is that they are making progress towards bringing that bright sunshine for themselves. But believe me, many of the friends that our fans have, many of the friends that we have, are not true friends. In a realist world, friends are uh, an ideal notion. There are real realist actors who are engaging with all of us because of their interest, and they speak the right language because it suits them. Why are so many countries involved in Afghanistan? Not because they are concerned for Afghanistan, but they're concerned for the promise that Afghan soil holds for them, the mines that Afghanistan has. They all want to have a piece of Afghanistan because it suits them. Um, we stand guilty, our neighbors stand guilty, our friends stand guilty, our not so near friends stand guilty. Everyone has some role to play in Afghanistan. One can also, from a distant uh, prism, see various internal actors in conflict zones who have played their own interest games. But this is how conflict happens. I'm taking a very, very, um, um, I would say, academic look at it. And I'm not trying to point fingers at anyone. But when you have a prolonged conflict, it becomes a free for all match for everyone. And this is unfortunately the tragedy of Afghanistan and then of course the tragedy of Pakistan and Afghanistan relations as well. So either we can live in the past, we can carry, carry the conflict constituency, we can carry the historical baggage, uh, we can maintain the distrust with one another, uh, or we can think of a better future. And as a woman, I would actually say, when, when you had Fawzia Kufi uh, speaking, Fawzia is a dear friend um, and, and there are many young people, young women like Fawzia, who are doing great job in the face of extreme adversity. Uh, Pakistan is not a signat no, Pakistan is a signatory to 1325 UN Security Council resolution on women, peace, and security. So is Afghanistan. But uh, Pakistan did not go for a national action plan, whereas Afghanistan has. And just look at a traditional society such as Afghanistan. We do have those. Facebook archives where we have the images of one women wearing skirts. It's not the skirt that makes you modern. It's your mindset. It's your thought process that makes you modern. And Afghan women have gone through all those phases. And today an Afghan woman in burqa can be as emancipated in her thinking as a woman who's wearing skirt uh, sitting in the UN uh, headquarters in New York. These women are making life good for themselves. In the face of adversity, where you have people like Farhanda Malikzada being stoned to death in 2015 for no fault of hers. Such a big tragedy. Where you have female judges being killed because they're females, because they are going to pass legislations which are going to make women more powerful. But you have 
uh, Farhan Danadri, you have Fazia Kufi, you have my dear younger sister, Mariam Safi, you have the first lady, Bibi Gul, uh, Mrs. Ghani, who is doing a great job for the Afghan women. And what actually the peace constituency that we need to build is where you have education, where you have visa free access, where you have long term visas that have been talked about, where you have trade minus uh, negative politics. Trade is all about politics. You cannot devoid trade from politics, but you can make trade with positive politics as well. Where you still have students coming from Pakistan, going to right. Afghanistan, going from Afghanistan to Pakistan. Unfortunately, over these so many years of living together, Afghan nationals coming and living in Pakistan as refugees and not as refugees, but as nationals in Pakistani cities. But we haven't culturally simulated or at least acquainted ourselves. We have always built the us and they constituencies. Um, Pakistani dramas are popular worldwide. It's, they're popular in India, but they're not popular in Afghanistan. We and Afghans have a common language, Pashto, and we don't, have, we don't know much about each other. So I think this is time where we get over these negative sentiments intentionally if we want to have a positive future. Thank you so much. I have many things right. to say, but I'm going to not say that because uh, I know you're pressed for time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for your value, uh, valuable comments. And very rightly said, you know, what I really like about this forum is that everybody can speak their mind. And, you know, when you, when you are working towards peace, uh, as Dr. Saiba said, that we need to first let out our grievances so that then we can find out a common ground. We can find out how we need to move forward. So we have with us Dr. Abdul Latif uh, Nazari. Uh, Dr. Saab, you know very well um, how, how Dr. Saab just said that the path to progress is to bury the peace, move forward. And let's let's in cash on, on those prospects or you know tap on those uh, potentials that we both can do together. We both can work together. Do you not think this is the right way to move forward for sustainable peace? Uh, thank you so much. Can you hear my sound? Yes, yes, Dr. Nasri, loud and clear. Yes. yes, thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, I want to read my uh, article uh, very shortly. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman yes. rahim uh, In the name of Allah, by the permission of uh, all the respected uh, attendees of the webinar, I want to talk very briefly about the Afghan peace process and the relations between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Afghanistan, after four decades of war, uh, is on the uh, verge of uh, peace talks to achieve peace. Uh, three factors are uh, important. First, internal consensus. Second, regional consensus. Third, global consensus. Uh, in the regional uh, dimension, Pakistan is a neighboring country of Afghanistan, can play an important role in Afghanistan's peace uh, progress. As uh, Pakistan efforts made the Taliban and the United States after a year of negotiation in Doha, Qatar. Now, the role of Pakistan at the Istanbul conference is uh, very important. Uh, Pakistan can play the role of mediator between the two sides of the Afghan conflict and uh, encourage the two sides of the war to reach the agreement. Uh, Pakistan also has good relations with the Taliban uh, and in contact with the United States. Therefore, if the United States uh, pledges that uh, 7,000 Taliban prisoners are uh, released and Taliban leaders will be left from the blacklist of Security Council of the United Nations and the U.S. Department of State. And the United States removes its uh, forces from Afghanistan, becomes an important step towards peace. At the present, the United States has been uh, accused of uh, violating the Doha agreement on the Taliban, owning to uh, resist the presence of their forces again uh, until September 11, 
Pakistan can play an important role in solving this problem again in the peace process. Because as I said, Pakistan's uh, relation with the Taliban and the United States are good and uh, can do the diplomacy and consult with the both sides of uh, uh, Turin. The Afghanistan war does not have a military solution. It must uh, end through negotiation and diplomacy. Another important issue is the uh, relation between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Afghanistan and Pakistan are two uh, neighboring countries with uh, common interests and common treats. So uh, we need to work together to achieve a common goal and uh, take off uh, obstacles from our way. One of the uh, serious obstacles to both countries is the interference of the third country that does not want Kabul and Islamabad stay together and save good relations. The security of both countries is linked to where insecurity in Afghanistan can also affect Pakistan's security. Terrorism is a common threat of both countries. And Pakistan and Afghanistan have uh, given many victims in the fight against terrorism. Trade and uh, transit is an important need for both countries. And Afghanistan oh. can be a link to Central Asia. Uh, border cooperation is also important because uh, terrorist groups uh, cannot easily enter the territory of both countries. But uh, an agreement on all of these issues requires dialogue, negotiation, and diplomacy. We can talk to each other and uh, negotiate on some problems and uh, obstacles. Not only government need dialogue, but the parliament of uh, the two countries should be associated with each other. Civil institutions, media, and professors of two countries can talk together and try to uh, develop relations between the two nations. We must not forget that Afghanistan and Pakistan are two Muslim neighbors with religious, cultural, historical, and civilian joint. The difference between us is very little. We should not uh, uh, allow the enemy and the third country to use uh, this uh, negligible and uh, slight and destroys relations between the two Muslim people. In the end, I right. thank the uh, host of webinar, especially Mr. Salman Jawid, uh, who provided the context of this uh, dialogue. Also, thank the peaceful efforts to the government and people of Pakistan. Pakistan is a friend of hard and difficult days of Afghanistan. Millions of Afghan refugees live in Pakistan and the role of Pakistan in the victory of jihad in Afghanistan is undeniable. Sustainable and uh, solid friendship between Afghanistan and Pakistan, a uh, whole peace and stability in Afghanistan. Thanks for uh, listening to my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sir. You, you actually really covered a lot of aspects. Uh, you covered the fear, you covered, uh, you know, what, what should be done in order to move forward. And uh, I would like that Sami Yusuf Zai is also with us from Afghanistan side. Uh, and Dr. Khurram, I'll come to you because, uh, you know, then I would really want, um, I would say uh, uh, an overall view of you know what is still going wrong and where, what what needs to be corrected and what are those bottlenecks. So I'll come to you after I listen to all this side, Sami. Um, you know the fear factor is now being um, uh, said a lot from the Afghan side, where we talk about the th external factor, the enemy country, the you know the third factor. So how do you think we, should, we we could avoid the third factor? Because earlier also after 9-11, it had a very negative um, impact vis-a-vis -vis Pakistan. The foreign policy of Afghanistan towards Pakistan um, was totally, um, I, I would say, under 
to that influence. So how can we um, eliminate and um, or control the third factor, the enemy between the two countries? Uh, uh, thank you very much, Nadia. I think uh, uh, when we are talking about third factor or uh, spoiler, I think it's yeah. more or less a propaganda uh, uh, and uh, uh, everything is very clear. Uh, Afghans need uh, peace. Afghan need uh, bloodshed to be stopped. And uh, uh, when we are talking about Pakistan and Afghanistan shared um, uh, destinies. I think uh, uh, in last 20 years, uh, Karzai, Ashraf Ghani, Musharraf, Nawaz Sharif, and everybody try, and you know there was five billion uh, trade uh, uh, between Afghanistan and Pakistan. So I think uh, uh, now when we are getting to the end game, and uh, I think the, after the American withdrawal, uh, uh, I see another uh, very very tense uh, era in Afghan and Pakistan relation. Uh, uh, personally, I believe uh, the reconciliation of the Taliban or uh, participant of the Taliban in a peace process uh, is almost uh, uh, impossible. And the reason is clear. Uh, the Taliban is, uh, of course, they are very part of the Afghan society and uh, uh, they are struggling against the um, uh, American and Afghan government. Uh, but they are not a political force. They are not a political figure. And the, uh, the international community brought them to, uh, to very luxury capital of Doha. And the aim of the, this shift was to, to, to rehabilitate the Taliban to be uh, more a political force. And they learn how to behave with the international community and how to find themselves in the future of the international community in the future of Afghanistan. Uh, but sadly, the Taliban is a very narrow mind uh, force and it's uh, almost impossible to convert them to a political process. Uh, so as the uh, withdrawal of the American is uh, getting closer, I think uh, uh, the situation in relation, I know their shared destiny we are talking about uh, uh, and there is a good relation, there is a good business, there is a now one year visa from both sides, a million of refugees in Pakistan. This is uh, an old story. And let's see, uh, the main factor is Taliban. And I don't think so. Uh, uh, when Afghans complained about Pakistan, uh, there is a spoiler or India had an uh, injection on the mind of Afghan to speak about uh, Pakistan. Uh, they are Afghan, they, they are very how good judgment in black and white, and they know uh, who is the Taliban, where they are fighting anyway. So I think that the, the Afghan Pak relation will get uh, more under tremendous uh, pressure. Uh, the, the problem with Pakistan is uh, uh, the, the, they should invest in, in a democratic forces in Afghanistan. They should interest in the people which has an international recognition or faces in Afghanistan. Unfortunately, they have relation with the Afghan government in the last 20 years, up and down, complaint. And the, the complaint of the Afghans about Taliban being in Pakistan never end. And I think they have a logical complaint uh, to, to, to Pakistan. But it doesn't mean they hate Pakistan. Uh, there is, uh, I would say, the Pak-Afghan relation, people relation is like a cousin relation. You keep, keep for a distance for a few weeks, but next day you have to go and approach each other. This is like very brother relations. Uh, uh, and as a refugees, I was in Pakistan uh, for 37 years and I know there was 5 million refugees. Uh, uh, I think uh, I never heard in, la in 35 years that ever, ever there was any local dispute between Afghans and local residents or local Pakistanis. And the reason was clear, we shared lot of co common um, uh, uh, relations yeah. and the culture. Okay. So, now, so I'm, you have I'm a coming first, to the... Sami, Sami, you have a first-hand experience. Then why do you say that after the withdrawal, you see terrorist relations? Why do you feel that, you know, the spoiler bit or the enemy is nothing but a propaganda? I think, uh, you know, why the Pakistani embassy was burned out in Kabul in 94, when the Taliban took the Herat province. 
So, uh, uh, of course, uh, the Taliban will be in a very, very uh, intense uh, and very aggressive mood after the withdrawal of the uh, uh, American troops. So that's mean ultimately the Pakistan will be claimed more aggressively uh, by Afghans and Afghan government that uh, 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 the, the Taliban uh, are like uh, in Pakistan, they are supported by Pakistan. Of course, the Pakistan uh, influence is uh, minimized, but uh, um, I mean, they cannot uh, force Taliban to do what uh, they want. And then the Pakistan is also now in trouble because the Pakistan is now, uh, the Taliban is now in a very strong position. I mean, they could create trouble for uh, Pakistan as well. Right now, 95% of the TTP hiding in Afghanistan in Taliban territory. And of course, the Taliban is many times being encouraged by, by uh, Pakistani elements to take action against TTP uh, and other groups they are wanted for Pakistani uh, security agencies, but uh, the Taliban say, no, we cannot do that. So uh, I, I just wonder, I worried that maybe next day, like Afghanistan is asking Pakistan to wind up the Taliban century uh, in Pakistan. And next day, the Pakistan will be requesting Taliban to wind up TTP century. So that's mean the thing is giving, going towards a very complicated uh, situation. And as I said, you know, if the if thing is getting worse, the relation of Afghanistan will be again in a very, very fragile position. Okay. So, so let's see what Obedullah Bahir has to say. He's a political analyst and postgraduate of IR. Do you agree with what Sami is saying? Or do you have a different perspective to all this? Hi, Nadia. Thank you for having me. Hello. I think this is a set up. Um, so I guess um, initially I agree with um, the statement that we have to decide between origins and beginnings. I mean, if we keep dwelling on to the past, uh, we wouldn't really move forward. Um, but, okay, I'll turn on my video as well so you can see my face. Okay, I, I feel like people were deprived of seeing my face. <laughs> anyway, so um, I think it's too early to start patting ourselves on the back. I think um, a lot of statements that came out today were about how Pakistan had put in so much effort, how so much was being done. Um, for the peace talks to move forward. I think that sort of creates a sense of complacency where it gives, takes away one's own agency and responsibility and puts it on um, the other for not cooperating. Um, and I generally had take issue with the emancipatory narrative or tone. Uh, basically, um, I think one of the fundamental problems is unless we see each other as equals unless we start working on a proper partnership, only then can we develop trust. Historically, if you, if you look at it, even right now, we talk about emancipating Afghan women or saving Afghanistan from a war and so on and so forth. Whereas the actual tone should be, we should enable Afghans to be able to do whatever they need to do, right? Um, and that's the only healthy way that we can move forward. And I. Personally, I disagree with uh, not allowing our previous panelists to continue with whatever criticism he had, because the people have to let it out. We have to, if we as intellectuals don't tolerate um, such, um, such- You're talking uh, about Dr. Latif. Yes, yes. I think we should yeah. have heard him out. No, we can hear him, but the only problem was the audio went off. So we, we still have time. In fact, okay. we don't have time. We've run out of time and we have four more people to go who haven't spoken okay. like yours. I, I, I do not want to take up anyone else's time. I realize that the panel today um, is a very esteemed one. Um, so I'll get to the point. I think we should accept realities. Look, um, if Pakistan has set it up or India has made it appear like there is a sense of competition within the area. It is all right to have healthy competition, right? Because again, foreign policy is all about influence. Foreign policy is all about um, seeing how many um, countries within the region stand by you. And the problem is that obviously the most unhealthy way of it is then a proxy war that, that takes place. But in a more healthy way, uh, India has been picking up its game with regards to its educational scholarships provided, with the regards to the ease with which visas are given out to Afghan people. Whereas the reality is, if you go right now and see the conditions of Turkham, 
it is creating further hate that is taking place across both borders. Um, and again, hate breeds hate. If people in Afghanistan find reasons to have sentiments against Pakistan, Pakistanis then in reaction will have sentiments against them as well. And we really, really need to avoid such a circumstances if we ever want to um, grow together. Um, again, with all due respect to Mr. Motmain, I think the whole discussion of legitimacy, maybe the main issue is, again, coming back to the point of emancipation or taking decisions for people, because I think that um, it's another issue of agency here. It's a, an issue of identity. The fact that he said that Pakistan chooses to not consider Ashraf Ghani as a legitimate um, uh, state representative and sides by the Taliban, that again creates more issues and sensitivities as well. Um, I think the more Pakistan sees Afghanistan as a partner um, and, and accepts certain realities about it, and it goes both ways. I like, I'm not saying that Afghanistan is not uh, to be blamed. Um, and again, uh, look, the problem here is it's not a one country issue. If we do go down this road, and unless we accept the reality that the Taliban probably cannot or should not have a one party rule in Afghanistan, as much as it would serve anyone's interest, the problem is that it will create a fragile state. Afghanistan has a lot of dynamic actors politically that have grown throughout the past two decades. Those need to be accepted. Unless they're included within the process, it will constantly keep reinforcing the strategic depth or the competition for control within Afghanistan. And since Pakistan has started this new shift in its international positioning or regional positioning with regards to India, and there is sort of leniency towards cooperation, we need to stop creating instances where we are pushing out the, the, the interests of regional partners from Afghanistan. So unless everyone is given a guarantee that Afghanistan will proceed democratically in a way where power is shared between all important entities and Taliban, the Taliban do not attempt to monopolize power because if the Taliban do monopolize power, the, what has to be accepted is that the Taliban have not been in the political spectrum for 20 odd years. When they come in, it right. is bound to create circumstances for a fragile state to come into be. And if a fragile state comes into be, we will have uh, the circumstances for local insurgencies to thrive and come forth and emerge. Um, so to avoid all of that, we have to accept that um, as using Afghanistan as, as, as seeing it as a, as a proxy or, or, or so on and so forth is a double-edged sword. Um, and again, as the speaker before me mentioned, Mr. Yusuf Zay, um, both countries are creating circumstances where their land is being used against each other. So unless we look for beyond all of that, unless we start um, using whatever influence or push and pull we have um, to work towards a lasting partnership, we will always be stuck in a prisoner's dilemma amongst ourselves where there will be mistrust, where we will consider that this is Afghanistan is a zero sum game between Pakistan and India. So um, I think the only way forward is cooperation. The only way forward is accepting realities. The only way forward is changing the tone that we have when we talk about this issue. Um, and, and people to people contact, people to people contact improves with providing better facilities and so on and so forth. Pakistan has done a lot for Afghanistan, but there's no point giving that up or changing that because one generation saw the hospitality of Pakistanis, the generation today has not. They have grown up within Afghanistan, within this war after 2001. They don't know how good this partnership can be. So how about we move towards a better future and show them what it can do for them? Thank you so much, Vedala Mahisa, with, with, with what you mentioned, and we're definitely looking beyond that. We all wish to look beyond uh, the past. We all wish to be in partnership. And as you yourself mentioned, this is what the webinar is all about, the shared destiny that we're talking about. And the shared destiny comes into uh, you know, areas of interest and mutual interest together. And as uh, His Excellency, the ambassador had also mentioned that people to people contact needs to be improved. And that's how you also remove the, uh, I would say the, 
the distrust that that is still there even you could remove the past i would say you can bury the past then because there's a lot to look forward to and both the sides are being very careful uh, let me uh, have mohammed sangar amizada here and thank you so much for being so patient you've been here since the beginning of the webinar um, what would you say uh, mohammed sangar amizada sir how um, ubaidullah bahir has summed up do, do you do you feel that there you know we are actually focusing there's there is a general opinion that talks about the past and then there is a fear factor that how we're going to move forward or there is going to be a lot of problems after the withdrawal or do you think that no we should just put all of this aside look at the bright future look at the um, geo economic Um, you know, um, probably through the prism of geo economy rather than geo political, and work together, both Pakistan and Afghanistan, in the region for peace, for prosperity and stability. Salamu na dear manan na na dear khor. The pakhto khabre kom. Wo khade wo kis noor palan misan ne ma po khabar bani pushi. The dear warm se po midun o bani basu kom au. راتن کے مسائل باندې بحث وکوم خو لک په ماضی هم زوم دلتا یو څه نه خوالې تیر شوې دی مونږ نو شک کولې چې دا ټول مسائل په پاکستان باندې واچو کله سه طالبان حکومت سقوط وکړ زه د لسم سن په ټولګي والوم نو په دې وخت کې افغانستان کې په ظرفیتي لحاظ باندې اکثریت مهاجر و او دوی په بهرنی هیوادونو کې خصوصا پاکستان کې ډېر ژوند کول په ایران کې هم چنان که کوم ظرفیتونه په افغانستان کې هم و تقریبا اکثریت د حکومت نه یا د طالبانو د حکومت نه بیرون و نو خمې په یادېږي چې کوم ځوانان چې پاکستان کې روزل شوي و دوی راغی حکومتي سیستم کې دننه سو او د حکومتي هغه پوسټونه ترلاسه کړه او دا اکثریت ځوانان په پاکستان کې وروزل شو نو مونږ واقعا په ډېر مسایلو کې د پاکستان د خلکو نه مننه کوو همدا اوس چې موږ مهاجرین په پاکستان کې ژوند کوي داسې ورځ مونږ نه دی اورېدلی چې دلته موږ مهاجرین ته هلته چې میاشت دي په یو شکل توهین ورته شوی وي یو موضوع د ډیور آنلاین مساله ده سیالته په تورخام کې یا په په قندهار کې په بولده کې وسون سره ډیر مخامخ یو اما ډیر مسایل دی چې موږ ګډ سره کار کولی شو یو بل موضوع سه کله سه دا لوی جګړه بیرته له سره پیل شو دا یو موږ ملامتي هم و ملامتي په دې معنا سه کله سه نوې اداره را منځته شو دا نوې اداره د بون د پروسې نه وروسته راغی ما په شمول مونږ خو ځوانان وو هغه وخت ډېر په بعض مسایل باندې پوه نه وو نو په یو شکل د شکال د ټوریزم په نوم ډېر په مختلفو سیمو باندې بمبارد شروع شو د ټوریزم په نوم د خلکو په کورونو باندې چاپي وهل شو د ټوریزم په نوم ایموک افغان مېرمنو ته توهین وشو ډېر هغه مسایل و چې هغه وخت مونږ ورته له بیک ویل او ایموک بعضې سیاسون چکچکې ورته وهل سي دا بمبارد په چا باندې و دغه بمبارد سره روان و ماشومان پکې وژل کېدل ښځې پکې کونډې کېدل خلک د کورونه ویستل کېدل یعنې په یو شکل د شکل دا جګړه له سره پیل شو دا په خپله یو 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 بد وضعیت چې اوس ورسره مخامخ و د هماغه د ایموک د بون د پروسې نه وروسته چې طالبانو داسې موږ فکر وکړ چې طالبان پیریان وو او دوی همدلته پیدا شو د هغه نه وروسته بېرته ورک شو نور نه پیدا کېږي نو دا یو لوی تېروتنه وو ایموک ایموک د جمهوري اسلامي نه چې موږ په خپل خلکو باندې رحم ونه کړ د امریکانو د نورو هېوادونو بمبارد روان وو او موږ ورته خوشحاله وو چې نوی نظام دی او موږ ټوریزم سره په مقابله بوخت دی دا د ایموک تېروتنه وو اما طالبانو هم متاسفانه چې ډېرې بدې حملې وکړ په کابل کې په نورو ولایتونو کې خلک ډېر له منځه لاړل شهیدان شو کونډې یتیمان د حد نه ډېر لرو اما دا یو 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 بد ماضي دی چې موږ لرو اما اوس کله چې دغسې یو حالت راغی نو 
هغه وخت پاکستان یعنی یو ښه پیل و پاکستانیان همکاري وکړ نوی نظام سره اما په یاد دی چې په ډېر ځوانان په اوسن ټکنالوژي کې دوی وروزل شو یعنی هلته روزل شوی و همدا اوس هم په زرهاو افغان ځوانان تاسو په هېواد کې ژوند کوي عمل ته درس وایي دا موږ ته یو لوی سرمایه دی موږ په دې باندې ډېر بحث کله وخت نه دی پیدا کړی چې په دې مسایلو باندې بحث وکړو همېشه موږ په مداخلو باندې بحث کړی موږ ګلې لرو هغه ګلې خو ډېر مسایل په ځای دی څو ورځ مخکې تاسو د یو د هېواد یو ډېر مهم مشر مولانا فضل الرحمن موږ د افغانانو پر ضد د پاکستان د جهاد اعلان کوي یعنی موږ د پاکستان د خلکو نه مننه کوو همېشه ورسره ښه اړیکې لرو اما کله تاسو اورېدلی چې د افغانستان لخوا د ځوانانو لخوا د مشرانو لخوا په داسې الفاظو باندې د پاکستان په مقابل کې سو یو کلمه کارول شوی وي دغه ګلې دي اما نادیا موږ په افغانستان کې کله چې د سولې پروسه پیل شو تقریبا موږ یعنی د سولې پروسه موږ په درې کټګورۍ باندې تقسیم کړ یو خو طالبان دی چې اوس هم جګړه کې هم په سیاسي مسایلو کې ډېر مطرح دي بل خوا ته حکومت دی چې په دې حکومت کې مختلف ډلې او احزاب شتون لري بل خوا ته د افغانستان نوی نسل او ښځې دي چې دوی د سولې پروسه کې حضور نه درلود نو موږ یو 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 حرکت پیل کړ چې تقریبا موږ اوس دېرش ولایتونو کې ځوانانو سره مشورې کوو یو مهم مرحله دا وه چې د سیمې د هېوادونو خصوصا د پاکستان نه موږ څه غواړو یعنی انتخاب ډېر لرو وضعیت ښه نه دی اما څه کولی شو نو شو کولی شو پاکستان دغه ځای نه کوچو کې لاړ یا افغانستان دغه ځای نه بټ چېرته نه شي تللی که امریکایان دلته حضور لري سبا ته به لاړ شي اما موږ دلته ګډ ژوند لرو ګډ فرهنګ لرو ګډ دین لرو ګډ ژبه لرو موږ ولې دغه اصلي مشترکات باندې ډېر تمرکز نه کوو بل موضوع چې موږ ورباندې ډېر باور لرو چې یو پاک موږ پاکستاني خویندې ورونه په دې پوه شي چې دلته یو یو لوی کتله د نوی نسل راتلونکی نسل روزل شوی دی چې دا که تاسو حساب وکړئ موږ په درې کټګورۍ کې چې طالبان او جمع د مجاهدین تنظیمونه چې دواړه یو خوا ته وکړي کېدای شي د دوه سوه زره کسان ډېر نشي اما موږ هغه تعلیم یافته د ماسټري او ډوکټورا په سطحه باندې هم ده اوس موږ د پنځه میلیون نه کسان ډېر لرو صحیح ده موږ سره توپک نه اسلحه نشته سره وجنګېږو ځکه چې موږ د جنګ په ژبه نه پوهېږو موږ د د سولې په ژبه باندې غواړو چې خبرې وکړو نو بنا پر دې یو مهم مهم مسله دا ده چې راتلونکي مسایل همدا اوس فکر وکړو پاکستان موږ ته ډېر مهم دی اجازه ده باید ورنه کړو نور هېوادونه د منطقې نور هېوادونه یې موږ ته دغه همسایتوب نه په یو شکل سو استفاده وکړي یعنې منافقت وکړي دا یې موږ ته په کار سره خبرې وکړو موږ تاسو راتلونکی هم تاسو په پاکستان کې غواړ راتلونکی سیاسي زمامداران کېدی شي اوسئ موږ هم کېدی شي راتلونکی حکومت یې موږ په لاس کې وي موږ تاسو کولی شو دغه دغه ما ته کښتۍ په ګډ سره منزل ته ورسوو باید اجازه ورنه کړو تاسو هم کله کله موږ نه ګلې کوئ چې په یو شکل هندوستان ته موږ ځای ورکړی شي هندوستان تاسو په خلاف پاکستان باندې یعنی پاکستان په خاوره باندې مداخله کوي زه ډېر په دې مسایل باندې لیوال نه یم ځکه چې موږ همېشه کوشش کړی موږ سفیر صاحب دا خبره وکړ چې ډېر موږ مشرکات لرو او موږ کولی شو ګډ سره کار وکړو هند سره به هم خبرې وکړو چې موږ پاکستان او هند موږ ته اولویت طبعاً پاکستان کې دی ځکه چې موږ سره ګډ سیمې لرو ګډ د ډیورلاین مسله صحیح ده یو یو ستونزه موجود دی اما که ډیورلاین لاین یو خوا ته کېدو موږ کولی شو ګډ ډېر نور مسایل دی چې موږ سره موږ کولی شو ګډ ژوند وکړو بل مسله تاسو کولی شئ د مختلف اقتصادي پروژو نه ګټه واخلئ او ګډ سره کار کولی شو همدا اوس تاسو پاکستانیان دلته په مختلف پروژو کې بوخت دی اما د افغان ځوان په صفت اما نه تاسو ډېر معاش اخلئ یعنی د پیسو په لحاظ باندې تاسو په افغانستان کې ډېر پیسې ګټئ که دغه موضوع ته موږ توجه وکړو هم تاسو ګټه پکې موجود دی هم د افغانستان افغان ځوانانو راتلونکی نسل ګټه پکې خوندي دی 
یو موضوع ته ډیر مهم دی چې زه یو سوبې سره موافق یم چې اوس د طالبانو مسله ده طالبان یو موک یو جز دی په دې کې هیڅ نشته افغانان دي دلته ورباندې ظلم شوی دی او په دې شک نه دی چې دوی هم په موږ باندې څه ظلمونه کړي یعنی ظلم شوی دی دلته انتحار شوی دی انفجار شوی دی خلک وژل شوی دی موږ یو بل باید اوس غم وکړو اوس اوس په پاکستان باندې ملامتي وچو پاکستان موږ باندې ملامتي وچی دا په دې مسایل باندې خبر نه حل کېږي نو زما هیله دا ده چې راتلونکې لپاره موږ باید ګډ سره ژوند وکړو موږ ډېر زه په امیدونو باندې ډېر تمرکز کوم امید یو ورځ به داسې وي چې پاکستان افغانستان داسې یو یو ژوند به وکړي چې کله سو بیروني هېوادونو کې دوی سره مخامخ شي د نورو په مقابل کې کېدای شي ګډ دریځ ولري زه په دې باور یم چې دا ورځ راتلونکی دی اما ایما غوښتنه دا ده چې دلته ډېر او لوی جګړه پېښ شوې ده تاسو کولی شئ موږ سره د سولې پروسه کې همکاري وکړئ د سولې پروسه باندې تمرکز ډېر اړین دی موږ اوس باید یو سیسفایر یو اوربن خوا ته ورشو جګړه روانه ده او, او, او په هم زمان کې خبرې نتیجه نه لري نو یو بل مسئله په دې کې موږ موافق یو چې طالبان د دغه فرصت نه باید غلط استفاده ونه کړي زه په خپله کله کله تورن کېږم چې زه په یو شکل د طالبانو په ملاتړ چې زه طالبانو ملاتړ کوم زه په داسې یو قیافه د طالبانو ملاتړ نه کوم اما غواړم چې طالبان د سیاسي پروسې یو مهم جز باید اوسي که طالبان غواړي دلته حاکمیت ترلاسه کړي د راتلونکي نوی نسل باید پام کړي دلته ډېر تغییرات رامنځته شوي دي بل موضوع چې ډېر اهمیت دی چې دلته مطمئن صاحب یو خبره وکړ زه غواړم چې هغه ته اشاره وکړم چې موږ اردو مسلمان اردو ده او موږ مسلمانان یو الحمدلله ډېر بخښنه غواړم نادیه یو مسله چې ډېر اهمیت لري هغه دا دی چې نظام به وي او موږ ملکي داره سیاسي تفاهم چې موږ طالبان سره یو ګډ سیاسي تفاهم ته ورسېږو د راتلونکي نظام راتلونکي سیستم ته به په ګډ سره د یو لوی جرګې ته ورسېږو زما وړاندیز پاکستانیان خویندو ورونو ته دا دی چې تاسو ځوانان هدف مې غواړم چې نادیه خور داسې دلته افغانستان کې هم خلک ژوند وکړي دلته چې سر لوچ وي د جهاد په نوم باید ورباندې حمله ونه شي موږ مسلمانان یو او همداسې موږ کولی شو ګډ سره ژوند وکړو ایا تاسو مسلمانان یاست موږ دلته کفار یو او حال داسې موږ دغه ګلې تاسو نه لرو ما ولې دا ګلې کوو چې تاسو رهبران بعضې سیاسي رهبران چې هغه د علماوو په نوم دی موږ باندې د جهاد په واسطه لري ایا موږ کافر یو ایا موږ د کابل دارالحرب دی نه موږ ټول دلته تاسو هم د اوس زه څو دوه ساعت مخکې د د جمعې د مانځه نه راغلم تاسو بحث ته هلته په زرهاو خلک مسجد کې د مانځه لپاره راټول شوی و ټول موږ پاکستان باندې هم حملې شوی دی په دې کې تاسو قرباني ورکړی تاسو په مکتبونو باندې حملې شوی دی ماشومان وژل شوی ایا موږ مسلمانان یو سینه تاسو په غم کې موږ شریک یو ما هیله دا ده چې هغه ځوان د پاکستاني ځوانانو څخه د خویندو ورونو څخه چې تاسو په دغه په سیاسي مشرانو باندې فشار راوړئ دغه فشار کولی شي چې موږ تاسو راتلونکي نسل لپاره یو ښه مثبت او انرژي لرونکی آینده وټاکي او زه باور په دې not misuse this opportunity given to them having said that uh, um, you know you also said that people should be attached with some democratic principles should not be encouraged to jihad and at the same time pakistan can help us in afghan peace process we need to go for ceasefire and this is not the time to blame each other thank you so much for your words i i wish you know i could uh, include you more i know that even you have been very patient like all the other panelists but there's so much to say and you know we we are already uh, you know running out of time in fact we were supposed to end half an hour earlier but you know this all has been so interesting from all of you because we really want that you know we hear uh, people from afghanistan side on this forum and also from pakistan side so that something can be worked you know that the commonalities can be identified and from here we can move forward this is one of the forums of many that are working towards peace in the region peace uh, between pakistan and afghanistan and for sustainable peace so whether or not the last guest from afghanistan side
um, we've had um, you know different uh, viewpoints regarding um, different views on, on on Pakistan and Afghanistan relation. How do you think we should move forward? Is my question to you. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wassalamu khair. First of all, I would like to present my heartiest gratitude to the organizers and distinguished members of uh, the panel. Today, I feel very honored to represent Capacity for Afghanistan think tank and to speak about peace process and our shared destiny with our neighboring and Islamic country, Afghanistan and Pakistan. I would like to mention some points uh, on different uh, parts of the piece. And unlike other members, I have a little different perspective from withdrawal of uh, NATO and US forces. I see these things and their withdrawal as an opportunity for our people. If uh, US troops withdraw, if NATO forces withdraw their armed forces, it can provide a wide chance to all Afghans uh, for integration. We have traditions of uh, jargas and dispute resolutions. Throughout the history, we have solved many disputes by our traditional means. So far, when we see these negotiations, we find that Taliban, and US are two parties and Afghan government is kept aside of these negotiations and Taliban side never accepted them as a counterpart. But when they withdraw, it will provide a chance for both of them to accept each other, to work with each other. If I give you example of our recent history, when Mujahideen took over the Kabul they declared all Khalki government officials uh, kafir and uh, they, they were either forced to leave the country or to be thrown behind the bars, which eventually resulted as uh, losing too many skilled doctors, engineers, highly professional pilots, and of course, too many officials. With these withdrawals, Afghans should uh, look for an integrated, united, and uh, uh, a converging system that can justify needs of uh, the whole nation. A system of governance that every Afghan see as their representative, a system that can guarantee relations with our friends, with our neighboring nations, and with those who help us in our bad times. And we look forward, like uh, as far as Pakistan and Afghanistan relations are concerned, we share too much in common. We share Islamic values, we share traditional values, we share uh, common uh, uh, ethnicity values that bind us together forever. Like uh, how much we try, we can't deny these facts that we are two strongest neighbor nations who will stand for each other in every time. Yeah, tough times occurred from both sides. Some mistakes happened, but it doesn't mean that it can uh, uh, divide our people or that it can destroy our future relations. Secondly, I will come to uh, Ms. Fauzia Kofi's uh, one remark that she mentioned. Uh, there are 20 or 23 military groups in Afghanistan who operate. My opinion is that throughout these temporary ceasefires, which happened for uh, three days or two weeks or almost a month, uh, casualties between government and uh, Taliban sides almost reduced to zero, which means those all military groups operate under the high umbrella of Taliban and without their support, they are nothing. 
if the government or people of Afghanistan make a peace pact with the Taliban or they agree on something that can justify needs of the people, then there will be no fire, there will be no burn, and there will be no blast, and no group can persist. Uh, secondly, Dr. Sab Shabir lifted a point uh, on China's concerns on their boundaries with Afghanistan. Yeah, China has uh, serious concerns on their boundaries with Afghanistan because of Daesh. And they are worried about existence of USA in Afghanistan and in the region that they have uh, mentioned on many international platforms. But uh, if we can assure China that a peaceful and united Afghanistan will never go against them, we will treat them as a friendly nation and we will secure our borders with them as we secure our borders with other friendly nations of ours. So there should be no worries from their side and they should work for a united converging and nationally interest oriented peace deal in Afghanistan. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, and you've uh, we've heard the valuable comments, Dr. Khurram. Um, you know, I'd like to come to you, Dr. Khurram. Ke baare mein, jaise maine aapko bataya tha initially, that he is the head of department of IR at the National Defence University. Uh, Dr. Khurram, do you feel that, uh, or probably, you know, we have to see it in a broad perspective? And the reason to have this uh, forum is to let out all the grievances, as uh, Dr. Salma also mentioned, and then decide as to how we can move forward. Do you think our past is more, uh, you know, the weight of our past is more as compared to the future that we are aiming at? Or do you think, um, you know, this will happen, but ultimately after the withdrawal, it is going to be Pakistan and Afghanistan that will work together towards uh, not only peace and prosperity in their own respective countries, but also in turn for the region. Well, thank you, Nadia. It's uh, great to be reconnecting with you after a long time. And uh, yeah. one is always wanted to be one of the last speakers, especially during fasting and when it is so close to iftar. So despite being so low in energy, I would try to recap uh, some of the important points that have been raised by uh, respected co-panelists. Uh, most importantly, the question that you have raised, whether it is going to help us uh, to, to resurrect the ghosts of the past. I would say that this is not an appropriate time to resurrect the ghosts of the past. We must bury the past and move forward because when it comes to cross-border terrorism, let's admit it takes two to tango. Uh, usually, when we talk about cross-border terrorism, the discourse is one-sided, often blaming Pakistan for uh, offering sanctuaries to Taliban militants. Before rebutting that, I would like to mention that Afghan Taliban, we should not make no mistake, they represent a significant proportion of Afghan population, especially those residing in the rural areas. And the Afghan population residing in rural areas by far outnumbers the Afghan population living in the urban areas. So any effort to outrightly reject them, ignore them from any peace process would be counterproductive. And that's what we have seen in the past. Pakistan's efforts to bring Afghan Taliban on the negotiations table is driven by the same very vision that Afghan Taliban represent a significant proportion of Afghan popular sentiment. Uh, when it's about uh, uh, the two-way street of these allegations, well, one has to look back in 1947, uh, from starting from Fakir of Ipi, the first insurrection against the state of Pakistan, how he moved to Afghanistan, how he was offered safe centuries by the Afghan government there, Moving ahead in 1970s, we have seen the terrorists of Al Zulfiqar, the leftist uh, inclined terrorist organization. Uh, they also operated from Afghanistan. We have seen 1970s again, how Baloch insurgents, they relocated to Afghanistan. 
and operated from there for years before they were called back under a peace agreement. And then of course, after 9-11, uh, we have seen how terrorists operating in Pakistan have uh, sought safe sanctuaries in Afghanistan, especially Tariq Taliban Pakistan and the Baloch militants as well. I would just like to recall uh, the assassination of Aslam Achu, who was one of the prominent commanders of, uh, of, of Baloch militants who was involved in masterminding a, uh, an attack on Chinese consulate in Karachi. He was uh, identified and then of course eliminated in Kandahar. And then recently the release of Malvi Fakir, a prominent TTP commander from Kabul prison. It raises a lot of question, of course, but is this going to help us the name calling at this, this point in time? I would say certainly not. What we have to look at, we have to look at the factors that, that combine both countries, that unite the both countries. And I would uh, agree with uh, my, my, my co-panelists who just spoke before me, that there's a lot that binds us than what divides us. And Ambassador Najibullah rightly spoke about those civilizational linkages spanning thousands of years between Afghanistan and Pakistan, uh, whether it's about religion, whether it's about cultural affinity, whether it's about language, cuisine, there's a lot that binds Afghanistan and Pakistan. And this is high time that we build on that legacy of thousands of years. And how we can do that, we can build on that civilizational linkages, firstly, by transforming our border from a barrier into a bridge. One reason that we have not been able to leverage upon civilizational linkages with Afghanistan is our tendency to treat our border with Afghanistan as a barrier, not as a bridge. That is why politically we lost Afghanistan to India and economically we lost Afghanistan to Iran. Only five years ago, Pakistan's trade volume with Afghanistan was around $5 billion, but it's been reduced to approximately $1 billion and Iran has replaced Pakistan as Afghanistan's top most trading partner and India jumping to the third space. So for, for borders to act as a bridge, it is also very important to ensure that undesirable elements, especially uh, from terrorist organizations and transnational criminals, they are not allowed to use and misuse those bridges. One reason that it's been so easy for transnational criminals from both sides, for terrorists and militants from both sides, was the porous nature of Pakistan border and inability of both sides to manage that border. Now, during last four years, to be precise, Pakistan has invested a great amount of resources to manage that border. And as both countries seek to improve uh, bilateral relations, this fencing of border would certainly come handy, but only if we increase the numbers of crossings between the two countries. And additionally, we have to build further on nascent Pakistan's goodwill that has been produced by providing 1,000 scholarships to Afghan students. There are thousands of Afghan students who are, of course, studying in Pakistan. And from this forum, I would like to suggest a knowledge corridor on Pak Afghan border to facilitate the movement of Afghan students to and from Pakistan. And we need not to look beyond the European Union, but in Asia, there have been a number of instances. I was in Singapore, and if you look at the border between Singapore and Malaysian city, Johor Bahru, Thousands of students commute every day between Singapore and Malaysia to basically attend schools in, 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 in those countries. So certainly there have been templates globally that one can follow. And if there is a will, there is a way. And certainly on Pakistan's part, there is a strong will to build its relations with Afghanistan because recently we have rediscovered our national poet's vision which Ambassador Najibullah rightly mentioned, and which we had gladly forgotten in the past, that Afghanistan is the heart of Asia. If Afghanistan is secure and stable, Asia will be secure and stable. And if there is anarchy and chaos in Afghanistan, its fallout will be felt across Asia. And we will never be able to achieve this 
dream of Asian century. So this is Pakistan's domestic economic and security imperative to have cordial, strong, brotherly, and friendly relations with the country. And briefly, uh, another point that has been uh, uh, mentioned, uh, that's about Afghan Taliban and a client-patron relations between Afghan Taliban. Most of us, we tend to uh, ignore that during the last few years, uh, Afghan Taliban have diversified their sources of external patronage. They are not only dependent on Pakistan any longer for the sort of support that they got in 1990s or the first decade of 21st centuries. We have seen Afghan Taliban engaging with Iran. We have seen Afghan Taliban engaging with Qatar, China, Turkey, Russia. So going by the same logic, Pakistan has also sought to diversify its policy options in Afghanistan. During the last 15 years, or 10, uh, 10 to 15 years specifically, from Pakistan's People's Party uh, time in 2008, Pakistan has increasingly engaged with non-Pashtun, non-Taliban stakeholders of power in Afghanistan. It was, it was an ultimate outcome of Pakistan's conscious effort that President Ashraf Ghani chose Pakistan first before India for his first state visit after he became the president of Afghanistan. So Pakistan is diversifying its option. We are trying to improvise uh, as per the ground realities. But one important lesson that we all have to learn that we have to bury the past. We do not have to resurrect the ghost of the past. It is a lot that unites us and we need to focus all our energies on the factors that unite both Pakistan and Afghanistan. That's where I'll stop. Thank you. I think Nadia uh, may have been facing some technical issues at her side. No, uh, thought about it that you were going to make it. Yes, um, I think we lost some connection over here. Dr. Kurun, thank you so much. You really summed, about, summed it up very well. And um, I totally agree what you said, that we need to look forward and we need to invest our energies into what can be done and the potentials rather than looking at our past. Uh, I would like, uh, because uh, it's already, a year, we are now cutting close to a start time, I, I know in many cities, but uh, thank you so much for being so patient. Um, you know, we before I conclude this, and thank all of you. I would like that Dr. Salma and Ambassador Sahab say, uh, say their concluding remarks on this uh, Park uh, Afghan Youth Forum. Um, Dr. Salma, you have heard that um, what all our Afghan participants have been saying. Dr. Khudam has also tried to conclude. How, how would you want to say your last remarks on this? Um, thank you very much, uh, Nadia. Uh, when we say that uh, let us not live in the past doesn't mean that we forget about the past altogether. We should learn from the past and we should try not to repeat those mistakes. But in case right. we want to work forward uh, with a shared destiny and uh, President Hamid Karzai's point that we are conjoined twins, so we can't really wish anything away. If we keep on living our today and bickering about what has happened, uh, yes, it, it may sound patronizing, but we need to really carve a space for ourselves in the future. Another point that I wanted to actually, the reason as to why I raised my hand initially, was that uh, when we look at any of these non-state or sub-state actors today, and we uh, Pakistan is heavily accused of financing, sponsoring, patronizing, Taliban. Fine, we are guilty of everything, ex except it. The verdict is out. India has already done that, Pakistan, uh, whatever. Uh, OK, so what happens the day after tomorrow? We need to understand one thing. Any of these militant groups have now become autonomous Frankensteins of their own. They are not banking and supporting on the finances, patronage, they are receiving from any of the regional actors. Uh, we don't have that type of money. Pakistan has a lot of problems when it comes to handling Afghan nationals because we don't have the type of capacity or the resources. 
we wish that we could and things could have been better. But the very fact is that when, especially when it comes to the Taliban, uh, they are an actor, a point that was raised earlier, probably by Ambassador Aziz Khan, that the political economy of conflict has become so strong and so deeply entrenched. The drugs, uh, what His Excellency uh, Ali Khel was also mentioning, the narcotics, the drug culture, the gun culture, it has raised an economy which is far more stronger and resilient than the state economies. And that is what is financing these non-state actors. We cannot really say that, oh, they are dependent on us. No, they're not, not anymore. And this is something that as state actors, we need to come together and address. The non-traditional security problems of today, COVID, climate change, water scarcity, are problems that have a hybrid impact. They impact traditional security. If we don't put our hands together and address them, tomorrow they are going to snowball and make uh, things very difficult for us. The peace process is not going to be very smooth. It is going to be extremely checkered. It's going to be difficult. <clears throat> But at least if we put our hands together, things might be better. Thank you so much, Nadia. Thank you, Dr. Salma. Ambassador, um, uh, Ambassador Saab is also with us. He, uh, he rightly pointed out, you know, mutual uh, areas of uh, cooperation that we should be looking at. Um, now, what would you say, um, uh, Ambassador Saab, you know, the, the road to move forward and for a shared destiny how important do you think these forums also contribute towards? Thank you so much. Uh, let me first uh, uh, pay a compliment to Nadia for having conducted this webinar, this uh, exhaustive and exhausting webinar, so so diligent, so diligently and so competent, competently. I am greatly impressed. Uh, Thank you. As far as uh, Pakistan relations are concerned, uh, uh, Dr. Salma Malik just uh, mentioned about Pakistan Afghanistan being conjoined twins. I, I think Mr. Karzai was the one who, who said that. And I think in a way that, that in a nutshell, uh, explains the nature of Pakistan Afghan relations. The conjoined twins are the closest that any bodies can be. But at the same time, they are a great nuisance for each other because one wrong mood by one, one twin can create problems for the other. So they have to be very well coordinated and very, very uh, understanding of each other in order to exist in the conjoined state. And that is, in, I think in some, is the nature of Pakistan of our nations. We have, uh, we keep uh, talking about uh, being brothers. Now, uh, I, uh, there's nothing wrong in uh, being brothers, but as Ghalib said, that I think it would probably be better for our relations if for a change we started con considering ourselves friends rather than brothers. Brothers can afford to have uh, unreasonable expectations of each other. Friends never do, and friends show understanding towards the other and try to accommodate the other. So I think it's about time that Afghans and Pakistan become friends more than brothers and work towards that. We have a lot in common and a lot to share. We have a lot of potential to achieve things, but that is when we really open our hearts and minds and try to understand each other. It's an unlikely scenario, but we need to work at, towards that goal. It will take a long time. Perhaps after the turmoil is over and the peace is negotiated by the Afghans themselves and a, a government is established there, we can wipe the slate clean, although it's impossible to do, but at the same time, try to develop our relationship as friends. And uh, I, I'm quite confident quite sanguine that uh, we will be we will be able to do that thank you so much thank you thank you ambassador Saab, uh, uh, ambassador aziz ahmed khan Saab, for being so patient along with all the other guests uh, though the session is not exhausting in fact it's very interesting and this is the time that we must deliberate we must bring out what is there in our hearts we must look forward towards the future 
and uh, we must make a difference so that you know the peace process goes uh, a long way and we can all play our part in actually you know establishing sustainable peace i would like to thank you uh, thank all the panelists from afghanistan his excellency ambassador najibullah ali khail sahab uh, fozia kufi saiba for being with us mr fateh gulshanwari sahab mr abdul latif malshanwari sorry that we couldn't take you much <clears throat> if there was an audio issue and and you know that we have a time constraint also mr sangar amir tata nazar mohammed mutmain Dr. Abdul Latif Nazari, Sami Yusufzai, Ubaidullah Bahir, Ubaidullah Afanzada, for your time, for your patience, and for for your input, of course. That is most important. The input that you have given, because this is how we all discuss, and this is how uh, you know perceptions are cleared, perceptions are built, trust is built, confidence building measures, and people to people contact. These two things, <clears throat> of course, are hand in hand. The panelists from Pakistan are Dr. Shabana Fayaz Sahiba, Dr. Salma Malik Sahiba, Dr. Talat Chabi, Dr. Khuram Iqbal. Thank you so much, and we would also like to thank uh, Mr. Salman Javed, the Director General Park of Mal Youth Forum, for organizing such a dialogue uh, where we could deliberate on what we need to do in terms of Pakistan and Afghanistan. If it's a shared destiny, if we all agree that we have a lot in common, there are a lot of more commonalities than probably differences. Then we need to invest our energies, our positive energies, in all the common goals, in all the commonalities that we share, in mutual interest. So, in the end, I would like to thank all of you and just say that we should not let our past divide the future. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you all. Allah Hafiz.